and Michael Remus. Hey, what's going on, everyone? A uh, happy Canada Day in advance to all of you. Ready for a long weekend, and welcome to a Friday edition of Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily, the final one in June before free agency in the National Hockey League gets going, and lots of news around the league today to get to. Uh, I will tell you, well, we'll get Remus in here and we'll uh, we'll discuss what our last 24 hours has been like finishing off the draft. Uh, but great to have you all with us. And um, thanks to everyone that joined us over the last four days from Nashville at the draft. Um, some of our biggest shows ever in Winnipeg Sports Talk history. And uh, obviously a huge thanks to Pat and the gang over at Cool Bet for helping us make all of that happen. Of course, Winnipeg Sports Talk at the NHL Draft in Nashville has been presented by our partners at Cool Bet all week. And speaking of Cool Bet, <clears throat> uh, we will get to the lines later on. And normally, oh, we'll be talking about what the Bombers are going to do, what the point spread is in that game. There's free agency odds right now, and that'll be a big part of today's conversation with tomorrow, UFAs being able to sign around the league. Plenty of news around the league today with some buyouts, a couple signings, and uh, we'll get to all of that coming up. But the huge news today, not entirely unexpected, but still official for many of the people that said that this would never happen. Blake Wheeler's no longer a Winnipeg Jet. He's been put on waivers for the purpose of a buyout. We'll get to that very shortly as well. Um, but as I said, welcome to everyone on the show. It is great to be back. Uh, <laughs> quite a uh, quite a travel day yesterday after we finished the show in Nashville. Uh, but we're good to go one more time before uh, a big weekend, both for fans of the National Hockey League and uh, hopefully us to uh, get back to normal. Um, do want to thank, as I mentioned, the great support of Cool Bet, as well as all of our sponsors that make Winnipeg Sports Talk happen every day. Uh, that, of course, includes Princess Auto, Huge sponsors of us and the Bombers. Big game tomorrow night. Consolidated Supply, BP and Royal Sports, Assiniboia Downs, the Winnipeg Gold Eyes, Breezy Bend, Aikens Lake, Little Brown Jug. Of course, the Nick and Nikki DQ and F Apparel, Wallace and Wallace, Vita Health Fresh Market, Manitoba Battery, Canadian Club, Aquatech, and Modern Man Barbershops. Uh, it's showtime. Fire it up, Remus. Get in here. <laughs> how uh, how are you feeling? I was going to say this morning. I guess technically it's the afternoon, but I will be honest. Uh, the uh, the body clock is completely screwed up after um, after everything that took place after we finished up our final show in Nashville yesterday and tried to get back to Winnipeg. Yeah, what's going on? I guess we'll have to give everyone a timeline here. So we finished the show at our hotel room, showed it to Embassy Suites uh, for the late checkout. Uh, hauled to what the... What a great hotel. What a, just quickly on that hotel in yeah. Nashville. I, I don't know if I'd stayed in Embassy Suites before. Uh, it was the media hotel. And a lot of people, you know, some of the guys that are regularly on the road are trying to stay at, you know, I got to get my Marriott points or whatever. I think this is part of the Hilton uh, chain. The best uh, breakfast buffet I've ever seen at a hotel. That was every day. And then 90 minutes of happy hour. Uh, with some drinks and beers that uh, obviously we didn't get enough time there, to be honest, because of how busy we were. But uh, yes, if you're ever in Nashville, huge shout out to the NBC Suites. They did give us that late checkout so we could pull the show off, get going. And uh, uh, and yes, uh, as soon as that show was over, you were packing things up. We were getting ready to go and then uh, began the planes, trains and automobiles trip back to Winnipeg. Yeah, uh, so we took a well, we took an Uber to back to the airport. Our flight was supposed to take off at six, and then it got delayed to six thirty. And I think just how things kept... change in the Uber. I was worried that we were going to miss the flight because of how bad traffic was in Nashville. Yeah, little did we know that we had a little bit more time than uh, we originally. Yeah, expected. then it kept getting delayed. You know, seven, seven thirty, eight thirty. 
And like you're going, we're like lining up when it's time to board. And there's like all these different delayed flights of people just like crowding the gates. And it was like a shoulder to shoulder and there it was crazy. And meanwhile, what, all the NHL people from the draft, uh, the draft were still, you know, there's a couple of Toronto flights. So a lot of people were hanging around, around there it was almost like a GM's uh, convention there, Huss. And eventually our flight got delayed. I think we finally left at 1030, landed in Fargo at one and uh, got home today as the sun came up. So I got a nap and I woke up to the Blake Wheeler buyout news, but that's kind of how, how our um, notes have been. I see a lot of people drop, has a lot of people here are also dropping um, super chats instead of asking about the laptop, seeing if I got a new one yet. I haven't even unpacked. So, that's, uh, you know, you may need to grab that thing just so we can actually do a, uh, do a bit of well, show and tell. On 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 laptop gate later yeah, on like, in the program. Well, I'll I'll pull up. The, we didn't pull up the picture yesterday, but we were using a. You know, I'm doing it off our of my home computer here, the show now, and I had been using the WST laptop while you were away. So we go. You know, on the yesterday morning at the arena, we go to pull out the laptop to I don't know edit video or whatever I was doing, and this is. This is what happened to it. Here's the pictures on Hustler's Twitter, but you know, we can do a little bit of show and tell here. Here. Uh, there it is. And, like, <laughs> this is the picture. It's got a cracked screen. The bottom's all warped. I think it overheated just from too many hot takes put through it. Yeah, well, as I said, there's some other good stuff, uh, funny stuff that will uh, have some fun in and around marbles at the end of the program. So make sure to stick around. We'll uh, have some theories on the laptop. Uh, I will talk about my conversation with Barry Trotz as well, which was fun. Um, and yeah, you mentioned just quick thank you to a couple super chats. Hockey Mom, thank you very much. We really appreciate that. And uh, Mo, good old Mo Jahangard back in on the Super Chat. What's up, Mo? Happy Friday, everyone. Wishing all a great weekend ahead. Mo, thank you very much for uh, for that. Um, so, yeah, we got back, uh, and what did we leave? About quarter to two from uh, the airport in Fargo. And uh, I took over. It was, uh, I, I will say this. I mean, you did a great job of uh, getting us there. I realized how bagged you were and being the consider considerate person i am i knew full well that you were going to have a three-year-old and a uh, a baby to deal with when you got home so i grabbed the keys um and listen channeled a little bit of my uh my inner max verstappen that honda is awesome by the way yeah. uh, an amazing car uh, there was obviously nobody on the road um there's not much of an easier drive than i-29 in north dakota so uh we got in at about five in the morning. And, um, <clears throat> you know, at that point, excuse me, after being on the road, it, it is tough to actually sort of, you know, just quickly turn it around and go to sleep. Uh, needless to say, it wasn't that hard, but um, got up not too long ago um, to the news of, uh, of Blake Wheeler being bought out by the, uh, by the Winnipeg Jets. So that obviously is the huge news today. We're going to talk about that with Scott Billick. We'll also get into it um, with Brandon Rewicki coming up a little later on. Now, we've got a nice draft recap. Um, we did one yesterday. We banged off another one with Stephen Ellis, who uh, really enjoyed talking to uh, from Daily Faceoff about uh, the draft in advance, hung out with him quite a bit while we were there. So we've got a bit of a recap from the draft yesterday from, uh, from Ellis that we're going to play. Um, and we are hoping... Um, to have Ace Burpee on the program, as we mentioned yesterday on the show, Ace has uh, organized a GoFundMe um, for Dancing Gabe and Dancing Gabe's future. And um, uh, we're uh, definitely looking forward to that. As I say, uh, because of the fact that we got in so late. Um, oh, yeah, no, Ace is going to be good to go. So uh, okay, we'll, we'll have Ace on, Ace on a little bit later on. And um, as I said, this is going to be, uh, it, it should be a really fun show. Um, but anyways, we got back. I, I will admit, a little foggy right now. So uh, <laughs> if the words don't come out as smoothly as normal, cut me a little bit of slack as well as Remus if um, we're not quite oh. on our game. But I think we will be because, uh, needless to say, Remo, there's a lot to get to. Um, overall, it was an absolutely incredible few days. Um, 
we had such a great time being back at the draft. It was a, a huge few days for uh, for Winnipeg Sports Talk. Got a chance to uh, see so many friends that maybe we've seen on the program and that have been with us a number of times virtually. Uh, but there's nothing like seeing people uh, in uh, in person. And I, I will say this, though. Um, listen, we all know that I like to go out, have a good time. Um, but it, it really was a, a, an incredibly hectic few days. And this will surprise you. Uh, you mentioned this yesterday on Twitter, Reem. We might have been the only members of the media that did not get to Tootsie's. Um, you know, we certainly went out for a few drinks. Uh, we had some great barbecue. Um but man, I mean, there was a lot of work going on, and uh, I got to give you a shout out for uh, you know everything that we uh, we were able to make happen. And uh, as I say, the uh, the response from everyone about the shows, I think, was um, well, listen, was exactly what we were uh, we were hoping to get from folks. And uh, as I say, we're uh, we're ready to go today because there is a lot. Um, you know, as we'll have a little more fun at the end of the program in and around marbles, but. Uh, Remo, I think we need to get right things to it. By the way, ah, BA Split, thank you very much. Good call on your part, Turd Ferguson. Happy to pay the bet you went and happy to support the show. Um, and I imagine that bet probably has something to do with Blake Wheeler. Um, Reem, it is official, and, and we had spoken about this almost as if it was fact, but there's nothing like official confirmation from, uh, well, in this case, the Winnipeg Jets, that uh, their longtime captain, Blake Wheeler, has officially been bought out by the club. And um, I will say this, uh, I think more and more we're seeing um, the new direction that the Winnipeg Jets are going in. And, um, you know, some of it will be on the ice. And, of course, we've spent plenty of time talking about the PLD trade to the Los Angeles Kings and the return coming back for the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, But culture-wise, and something that God knows I've talked enough about on this program over the last year plus... Um, you know, needing to turn over with a new attitude, with new leaders. Um, this was, a, this might be one of the most important moves made all year. And and listen, I, I've said a number of times, I got a lot of respect for what Blake Wheeler did on the ice last year. That was a difficult situation for a guy to be in, um, to lose the C. Um, and, you know, at his age, the guy can still play. Uh, he had 55 points last year. Was he an $8 million player? No. Um, that happens, though, often when you have a guy that spends that much time uh, with an organization. And, um, you know, he made some incredible, incredible contributions and impact over the course of uh, his time here on the ice, in the community. Um, but I think it was very clear that this was somewhat overdue to uh, to make the change. And Blake Wheeler would be, Blake Wheeler would be at the top of that list. Um, and I've said before... The Jets 2.0 doesn't really begin the Jets 3.0 era until Paul Maurice is gone. Obviously, that happened previously. Uh, Blake Wheeler had moved on. Um, And now the big question is where that leaves Mark Shifley and what Mark Shifley's future is. Oh, Listen, Mark Shifley, I mean, unless there's a trade or something that happens, he's not a free agent. So he's still property of the Winnipeg Jets. And I think certainly in the Jets' mind and most of us watching or talking on this program, um, you know, maintains value in the National Hockey League. It's not going to be a player that is just given away. But this is a part of a culture change of the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, and, um, well, we can talk about whether it's overdue or not. The bottom line is these changes are being made last night. Um, you know, I think another exciting young player coming in in the first round in Colby Barlow. If you if you just joined us and if you missed the last couple of days, get to our YouTube channel or yesterday's show and, Check out the interview with the with the young man that we did right after he was picked. Um, but this team, I think, already feels a little different um, with Blake moving on. And um, listen, I, you know, we're not, what's the old saying? You don't speak ill of the dead. Um, I, I think at this point, I mean, there, there's obviously reasons why Blake Wheeler was bought out. Um, but I, I think right now, at least, what we're all start with um, is the incredible contributions that Blake made to Winnipeg coming in in 2011 along with the rest of the guys that were Atlanta Thrashers. He only played 23 games for the Thrashers after that trade from Boston and was a mainstay, was an Ironman more often than not for the Winnipeg Jets, Um, you know, ascended to the captaincy after Andrew Ladd moved on. And, um, you know, one of the most decorated players in the history of NHL hockey here in uh, in Winnipeg. So um, 
He ends it in a way that I don't think anyone wanted to see. But I'll say this, Reem, uh, I think the Jets did him right by, I mean, they knew what they had to do. They wanted to move on from Blake Wheeler, uh, and he's now a free agent. And uh, we'll talk about some potential landing spots for Wheeler a little later on with Scott and Blake, but there are Scott and uh, Brandon. Um, but overall, I mean, I think we look back and, um, you know, as much as people have particular takes and opinions on Blake and some of the things that he did, uh, both, uh, you know, on the ice, maybe with the media, behind the scenes, this was a guy that, um, you know, eventually will come back to Winnipeg, will be celebrated. I think we'll focus on the positives. And there were a ton of positives that Blake Wheeler brought to Winnipeg during his time here as a Jet. Yeah, very nice um, post by Mitch Clinton on the Winnipeg Jets website. You know, franchise leader in assists, points, games played, um, you know, off the ice, um, you know, his work with uh, Cancer Care Manitoba Foundation, raising a ton of money there. Um, you know, thousand games played, you know, back to back ninety one point seasons. I mean, there was a stretch where I think a five year stretch where he missed like two games, and one of those he got sat out. Um, you know, because they were already in the playoffs. I mean, his body took a beating, and he always came back. I think he took a puck to the throat. He got pushed into the into the gate, you know, pushed into the post, and he never missed missed time. Last year with the knee injury, he came back far quicker than anyone would have imagined, and he missed time this year when he took uh, a puck, you know, a puck to the balls, and uh, but made the ultimate sacrifice there, and he came back. And I can't imagine he played through that game, us. Played through that game, and I think... Listen, he dude, he came back in the third period. I think I told this story a couple weeks ago, but I was emceeing the Hockey Helps the Homeless event across the street. I got back midway through the third period. Wheeler came back, and in that game, if people remember, I mean, this is a 1-1 game headed to OT against the Nashville Predators, and Wheeler somehow comes back, and actually, maybe it was just the adrenaline from what he was going through physically. Um, he took that puck wide with his big frame to the net and almost scored the winner in a in, in a vintage Blake Wheeler piece that you know reminded us of the uh guy from the you know 2015 2016 2017 18 seasons mm -hmm. right now but um what's I think important you know as much as this and we'll talk about Wheeler's contributions and you know the great legacy um that he you know had on the ice this is not as much a hockey de uh, hockey decision because as I said, Blake Wheeler's going to be in the National Hockey League next year. He'll contribute. He'll help a team win games. Um, this is an overdue move to turn over um, the leadership to other players with this Winnipeg Jets team. Um, and also part of a culture change that, I mean, I don't think anyone, uh, you know, is doubting kind of where I come through on this. Um, that's been, that's needed to happen. I think... And again, this is not all about Blake, and it can't all be on Blake, but he's a huge part of it as the captain and as the uh, guy that was sort of running the room, especially since Dustin Bufflin left. And I don't think it's a coincidence that it's the second half of the 2019 season things started to get, I don't know, for lack of a better term, maybe seemingly a little bit rotten in and around the uh, culture, the locker room of the team. And, you know, I, I think we saw it again this year when you know, at the end of the year, Reem, um, you know, obviously Blake Wheeler led the criticism of Rick Bonus after he justifiably lost it after a no-show in Game 5 and their season ended. Um, but the other part of it was um, that, you know, Blake was... Uh, he was still sort of a guy that was leading the way. Um, and I think this needed to be happened. It needed to happen. This is going to create new opportunities both on the ice, in the top or middle six for a player... Obviously, there's three players coming from the Los Angeles Kings, and I think we get an opportunity to step into that. Um, and now it's time for the Adam Lowry's, the Josh Morrissey's, um, to take over and really be the culture carriers and have a uh, have a different atmosphere around the Winnipeg Jets in that room when the likes of a Colby Barlow, of a Rucker McGrory can come in, become Winnipeg Jets in the future, and... Um, you know, significantly change, I think, the way things are done um, and the feeling around a team. And I say this from a fan, from fans. Uh, part of the thing that I think the criticism that the um, organization has taken 
you know, about kind of running it back, if you will, and sticking with that core as long is that, you know, with thing with the way things trended kind of post-2019 into the pandemic, and of course the pandemic in strange ways changed everything and put a lot of this on the back burner. I think that's the reason why it took as long as it did to, you know, to get to this point. Um, the, the team at times, despite all the success that they had on the ice, was in some ways a little unlikable at times. And um, we've seen with the young men that the Winnipeg Jets have selected and the way they've been received by the fan base for what they've had to say. Obviously, talk means something, but it's how you play on the ice. Um, but I think this is maybe this move today, the most significant culture-changing move we've seen in Jets 2.0 history as uh, we look to begin sort of a new era as Jets 3.0 or 2.1, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and I think over the last couple of years, well, first of all, they removed the captaincy from him and it clearly didn't have the intended effect as players still referring to him as captain at the end of the season. But I do think part of you know him being there and having that big contract influenced some of the lineup decisions, still getting power play one time, still getting top six minutes when maybe it was time to move on, but it's really hard to do that to a guy who's been here for so long and been the captain. I do think it will help them. I mean, you see so many teams up against the cap. Um, this by what he had an eight point two five million dollars salary, and his buyout has cost the Winnipeg Jets two point seven five. So I think if I can do quick math in my head, that frees up just uh, you know just under six million in cap space. So. You know, there are some players, you know, becoming free agents, and I don't think there's a lot of available money up there because everyone's up against the cap because it hasn't gone up over the last couple of years. So, you know, while the Jets typically are pretty quiet in free agency, I wonder if they do make uh, make a sign. We have seen some names come available. You know, Matt Duchesne is a guy who was just bought out. No, I, I don't think he would sign here, but I do wonder where he goes and what the market is for a guy like him. Well, the, um, the Matt Duchesne's of the world are going to have to make some tough decisions um, because, I mean, listen, he got bought out. That's a humbling moment. Um, he's going to get some money, but he's going to look for a place. Listen, I guess part of it, hey, you want to win? You want to be a fourth liner on some team? Or do you want to go to a place where there's a big need at center and you want to try and resuscitate your career? And uh, I think, fat, listen, this move, and you mentioned they'll have over $5 million in additional cap space this season. They will have a penalty of 2.75 next year. Um, yeah. But that's the cost of doing business. And uh, obviously, this is what the team needed to do right now. Hey, shout out to Dan Jets fan with another nice donation in the super chat. Planes, trains, and automobiles and laptop replacement fund. Thanks a lot, Dan, for, uh, for that. So listen, we're going to get to it with Billet coming up right now. But... Let me just put this to you in the chat right now. Our why not question of the day for not Autocorp over at Waverly and McGilvery. Um, thoughts on this move? I guess your 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 quick reaction to the move, um, and how will you remember Blake Wheeler, um, who of course was a mainstay in a lot of ways, the face of this franchise for a big portion of the time since Winnipeg came here in 2011. Why not question of the day? Hit us in the chat if you're listening to the podcast afterwards. Send us an email at sports talk WPG. All right, we're going to get Billick in here right now. Um, just before we do that, got to give a big shout out to our friends at Modern Man Barber Shops. Modern Man now has eight locations in Winnipeg, including the newest locations on Pemina Highway and Plessy Road. Modern Man Barber Shops offer a variety of grooming services, including haircuts, beard shaping, shaves, color services, and more. Book your look via modernmanbarber.com and follow them on Instagram at modernmanbarbershops. Uh, and hey, looking good for the long weekend sunshine. Might be time to get out and hit the pool. Why not make 2023 the year you take the plunge? Visit aqua-tech.ca to design your own custom pool. Their team can provide on-the-spot pricing from designers as well as financing options that suit you. And whole home rentals start with Aquatech as well. With thousands of renovations as their foundation, let them upgrade any space in your home. Aquatech's ready to make your rental dreams a reality. Learn more about design, pricing, and financing options at aqua-tech.ca. Hey, the long weekend is here. You're spending time with your family. You might be getting out of town. You might be heading to the cottage. Do you have your batteries, folks, for all those fun machines that are either going to help you have fun out on the water or around, or 
maybe take care of the property that you need to do it, whether you're talking about lawn tractors, sea dews, um, ATVs, golf carts, Manitoba Battery has it all. And uh, uh, listen, we know how precious this time is right now for you and your family. Um, they're going to save you some time as well. You're going to get the best price in town, beating the pants off the big box stores. You'll be shopping local and Manitoba Battery will deliver those batteries anywhere to you inside the city of Winnipeg for free uh, with a minimum purchase of 60 bucks. Do not wait. You can give them a call right now. Um, they might even be able to get same-day delivery right now. Usually in at about 1 o'clock is that cutoff time, but uh, hey, Donnie and the gang have a great staff. Maybe they can help you out. If you're listening to us live on YouTube right now, otherwise pop by Manitoba Battery, 1026 Logan Avenue. Give them a call. They are the Battery Superstore, oh, proud sponsors of WST and the best prices in town. Um, just before we get to Billick, uh, hey, it is Canada Day long weekend. People are going to be having a few drinks right now. Maybe if you uh, want to change it up from beer, obviously you can get into a Canada's favorite Canadian whiskey, but think about Canadian Club and Ginger Ale, the uh, incredible premix cocktail that's ready to go in cans. Grab a rack, stick them in the cooler, bag of ice, you're good to go. And uh, you can pick it up at your local liquor marts, but you can also pick it up at the beer vendors. So when you're going to grab a rack of your uh, little brown jug for the weekend, take a look for CC and Ginger Ale as well. All right, Rewiki coming up a little later on. Our pal Ace Burpee jumping on for a very important movement that he's got going on right now on a GoFundMe, Marbles and more. But uh, we're back in town and Scott Billick is back on WST. Billick, what is up, man? How are you? It's going good, dude. I, I'm hoping for a break on Sunday. Sunday, because tomorrow's still free agency, so I'm hoping. It's been a wild week, man. It seems like forever ago that it was Tuesday and the Jets had traded Pierre-Luc Dubois, right? So, then the draft, and <laughs> now we are getting bought out. That, like, I mean, yeah, that was this crazy. week. <laughs> it's crazy. That's crazy. So, yeah, it's been it's been a week. I'm ready for a couple of days off. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's still uh, kind of a uh, foot to the floor here. Um, with free agency tomorrow and then everything that's obviously gone on today well, you know it's so funny i don't know if folks could hear that or not on the air but uh, you know you mentioned the dubois trade on tuesday and remus went dude wait that was this week i mean it, yeah. it has been and listen that was part of the reason why i think we were so excited to get it to nashville because we knew this would be um you know uh, one of the most important weeks in jets 2.0 history and Obviously, a huge trade that was made, which we can sort of get to in a minute. I mean, important draft picks, very quiet trade-wise, and I think that spoke to the mm -hmm. quality of players in the draft. Um, but also, the staring match between NHL GMs as we got into free agency and saw who was available at what cost. Uh, but let's talk about the big story of the day. Um, Scott, you've covered this team yep. for a long time. You spent a lot of time talking to Blake Wheeler. How significant in your mind is the announcement today of the Winnipeg Jets doing something that a lot of people in the chat said would never happen, and that's <laughs> moving on from Blake Wheeler and buying him out? Well, first of all, I'll say this. Blind, buying Blake, Blake Wheeler, buying Blake Wheeler out, that's a tongue twister, um, is, it speaks volumes to where... Because I, I agree, like, I mean, with, with some of the people who said that, well, this would never happen, you know, it, 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 I don't know how close it got to not happening, because I think a lot of us could have seen Blake Wheeler come back um, for his final year, have a farewell tour and ride off into the sunset, right? Um, I think, but, you know, I think it, it's come down to the fact that the Jets know Blake Wheeler has to go. Um, and, you know, I think we've known that maybe for a lot longer than, than the Jets have. Um, but you know, I think this was one of the most difficult decisions this team has ever had to make because of what Blake Wheeler represents for the franchise, a guy who, um, re-signed here at the peak of his career, um, could have gone anywhere else, uh, you know, after a 91 point season, um, the first of two, um, but saw Winnipeg and said Winnipeg was a, a place that he could, you know, maybe he would have got paid less somewhere else. Who knows? I mean, I, I don't think it was about the money for Blake Wheeler. I honestly think. You know, he saw a chance to win and took it, but it, that meant a lot for this franchise to sign a player of his caliber at the time to what they were able to sign him for. So it's big in that regard. Um, it, it's also monumental in the, in the fact that it, it, it represents a shift in what this team is going to do going forward. The Blake Wheeler is out of the way now. Um, and for this team to 
have its younger core spread its wings, uh, that needed to happen. Um, we saw that at the end of the year uh, when Blake, you know, basically all the players that were asked about it basically said that it was him, you know, that that was still the captain, even though he didn't wear the C. And, and you know, I think in hindsight, we could all have seen that coming. Um, because, I mean, how do you, you know, we, we've talked about this, you know, at, at, at nauseum, you know, but it, how do you take away a guy who's been a captain for a lot of these guys' entire career on that team and, and still leave him there and, and let him, you know, and, and think that the players still aren't going to look to him because that's the only thing that they know. So it, it's big in that sense. It's big in the sense for the city. It's big in the sense for the club, the fan base. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it needed to happen. And arguably it needed to happen sooner. But, you know, the Jets caught to it this year. And, uh, you know, I think they tried to trade him. I don't think there was anybody willing to take on even half of his contract. And I don't think there's a third-party broker out there to take on half of that half. Um, because, of, you know, you look around the league, cap space is so tight right now. I mean, the cap's only gone up $1 million. Think of, and, Scott, you know, think of the just, trades. Yeah. Think of the trades that we've been looking at oh, all no. throughout this week. I mean, I we joked that... I mean, they were all just one for zero trades. Guys yeah. were getting traded for nothing. Like Taylor Hall. Taylor yeah. Hall's still a pretty serviceable player on a pretty good contract, gone for nothing. Yep. Ryan Johansson left for Please half of his salary. Yeah. Yeah. Matt Duchesne just got shot out, uh, just got bought out today. Um, it, it is a bizarre, there's a bizarre trade market well, right now i mean can yeah. the guy play absolutely will he be able to yeah. go to a spot where he is more of a complimentary player and i think help a team win some hockey games absolutely um yeah. but as you mentioned this was clear and i think the winnipeg jets in some ways really realized that this was something that they would like to do last year um mm -hmm. but you know for a guy that was where he was with what he'd done i think they felt that there still was enough value in that if they were going to just eat it the way they had to do this year it would be worth trying the other way they stripped the captaincy. Rick Monas went that way. Um, listen, if there was any doubt to anyone, we all got confirmation of all of it in the final media address from the players yep. at the end of the season. And uh, yep. the bottom line is they're looking forward, uh, not backwards. And uh, the future of this Winnipeg Jets is not with Blake Wheeler as being uh, a culture carrier and being one of the most important guys in that room. Yeah, because, you know, I think at the end of the day, you have to look at the fact that, yes, Blake Wheeler's legacy, I think, in the end, is going to be positive. I think, I think especially among the fan base, they saw a guy go out every night and give it his all. But I, I think you have to also weigh that with the negative. Um, you know, Blake Wheeler wasn't the perfect captain. You know, there aren't many of those around. But, you know, he had his flaws. And, you know, part of that flaw, I, I, you know, in my mind, was also fostering a culture that, that – that at times, uh, you know, wasn't able to look in the mirror um, and, and, and take accountability for their own actions, uh, including Blake Wheeler, right? Um, you know, I think there was times where Blake Wheeler was honest and, and, <clears throat> and did look in the mirror. I mean, he, he said in that one interview with Sarah Lesky several years ago that he was too hard on young players and, and, and that sort of thing. It, it was taking a toll on his family life and all the, those sorts of things. And, you know, I think we we know what he's done in the community, especially for cancer care, in Manitoba. I mean, that, that stuff is all admirable. Um, but for the on ice product for um, the success of this team, I, I, I think Blake Wheeler had his hindrances and, and, and he hindered, you know, the ability for this team to, to he, let's say that he capped this team's um, ceiling of, of success um, with his leadership. And, and so, you know, the, I, I think for fans, they don't get to see that as much. You know, you don't get to converse with Blake Wheeler every day. You don't see him every day. You don't see the thorny side of him unless it was on a, a media interview. Like, th there was times where, um, you know, he, it, Blake Wheeler went cold with us. Uh, I think Jeff Hamilton Hammer had it on Twitter. That was a good word, man. You know, cold cold was the right word. I mean, there was times where he was very thorny with us. Um, yeah, yeah, is that, you know, it, that does that matter in the end? I don't know. I mean, I think for some fans, though, they see – um, the media is an extension or of, of themselves, and then when we ask questions, uh, you know, they're the ones, the fans that get the answers, and and you know, they want to see, um, they want our questions answered by the players and, and that sort of thing. I think there are definitely fans that want that, and Blake wasn't always, you know, the best at, at doing that. Um, but he was also one of the the better quotes over the last twelve years too, right? I mean the. You know, Blake Wheeler, I, I believe, at one point tweeted out when when Donald Trump 
uh, at one point suggested that uh, uh, it was some some sort of free speech thing. And and Blake Wheeler tweeted out, you know, to the First Amendment. He was vocal about the George Floyd uh, murder in, in in Minnesota. I believe his tweet at that time was "My city is burning" or something along those lines. Um, you know, so Blake Wheeler stood for a lot of good things too. But but at the end of the day, I mean, you know, I think when he comes back next year for whatever team he plays with. I don't think there's going to be a, I think only Dustin Bufflin's return at some point um, would uh, out, um, uh, whatever the word is, out. It, it would be, I don't, I think that Blake Wheeler, the loudness of the fan, the reaction, the, the welcome back will only be surpassed by Dustin Bufflin at some point, or maybe even Brian Little. Um, but, but Blake Wheeler, I think among the fan base, despite his flaws, I think it's going to be remembered for a guy who, Left everything on the ice and and never never took a night off, um, and let alone and never took a shift off. Yeah, listen, and time to some of the worst things I've ever seen. You know, from the the ruptured testicle, <laughs> right? The um, ultimate sacrifices, to, to, Remus is referred to, right, right, right. Or, but I mean, to me, I go back to Dallas in 20, 2014. I was um, at that game. I'll never you know, forget that, it. That, that's an insane insane way to go into the boards and the fact that he barely missed you know time let alone the rest of the game like he didn't even like he, he came back and and i you know it's one of the things that paul maurice always kind of talked about with uh, with blake wheeler is the fact that blake wheeler came back after writhing in pain on the ice going into the corner of an open bench door like well and let's not forget you know, that game scott crazy. like that that was yeah. like the final week of the season the Jets yeah. were in reality eliminated, but they had not been officially yeah. limited, eliminated from the playoffs. And if you go back to the archives down on Pemina Highway uh, and listen to my show that day, uh, like we were on the road with the club, <laughs> Gary and I were. And I said uh, on that program, um, folks, if there is any doubt who the next captain of the Winnipeg Jets is, you saw it last night in number 26, Blake Wheeler. I mean, he came out. Uh, like I was worried that he, like, that was the sort of injury that might significantly harm his career moving forward. I mean, it was right. that scary and that ugly. And on a team that was basically done, for him to come back out of the dressing room with three minutes left to try to do what he could do to get his team to scla- uh, cr- uh, scratch and claw back in and get a point yeah. or get a win to stay alive spoke volumes uh, about him. And I mean, listen, he did have a great run uh, at times, but listen, uh, like everything, um, there are times to move on. And, uh, and that time is, um, I agree with yeah. you as well. When Wheeler does come back, it, it would be wild. A lot of people expect him to maybe hook up with his old pal Pomo in Florida. <laughs> it yeah. would be absolutely be the <laughs> wild. The home <laughs> opener being the Blake Wheeler return game. And yeah. of course, Dubois, <laughs> is going to be here in home game number two in that first week of the season. I texted balls to Vegas. <laughs> I texted balls and the guys over at the Jets go, you got, you'll better get working on those tribute videos right now because uh, you might be cranking out a few pretty yeah. important ones at the beginning of the year. Um, but listen, with Wheeler in the rearview mirror and no longer a member of the Winnipeg Jets, um, as you mentioned, there's some money to be spent. There's yeah. still there, there's still a yeah. lot of intrigue as to what happens with Hellebuck and Shifley, and I have a feeling that and this will be great for us. Usually things get really quiet in the National Hockey League after that first week of free agency or so. I'm not sure that's going to be the case this year with the cap only going up one million dollars. Right. Um, but it does give the Winnipeg Jets some certainly some more options on their side of things when it comes to offering players to come in and, um, you know, continuing well, a pretty significant turnover of a good portion of the roster that really began with the blockbuster Dubois deal. Well, and that's the thing, right? I mean, as we've seen this and as the Jets now have uh, just under 14 and a half million, I believe in cap space, uh, just looking at cap friendly right now. Um, yeah, obviously they got Baron to sign, uh, Kapari now, Velarde, I believe. Um, what are they going to do with uh, Nemestikov who's hitting the market? Stanny. Uh, yeah, you know, is Stenlin going to be back? Dylan Sandberg and Logan Stanley potentially need new deals. Well, it's I don't know what they're doing with Logan Stanley just yet. Um, but just looking at those, I mean, so that's going to take up, you know, a chunk of that change. But, you know, with, with teams going to be unable to spend a lot of money this year because of the fact that you're, um, you know, the cap only went up a million and this was essentially a flat cap. And 
a lot of teams already in that. You know, the Jets, I think, are in a bit of an advantage here that, you know, if they wanted to get their guy, they could, you know, they could, you know, they could throw some money at a player, right? And, and because they have that ability to do so. Now, this year's free agent crop isn't that great either. And, and this is a team that also might need a goalie. We don't know what they're doing with Connor Hellbuck or Mark Scheife yet. So, you know, it, I, I think it's going to be a little slower. You know, I, I think you could go through tomorrow and maybe not see any moves. I mean, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow across the league because, because there's just not a lot of money going around this year. And, and, and because the free agent crop just isn't, isn't that great. Uh, you know, it, it's one of the weaker ones this year. Um, but there's a few added, you know, what, what's going to happen with Matt Duchesne. I mean, you know, if, if the Jets need a center, well, I mean, you know, you, maybe you get Matt Duchesne for cheap. Uh, he just got bought out today by the Nashville Predators, so that's a big deal. Um, that that's that changes things a little bit. So, but I, I don't know. I mean, and, and that's the thing. I think I think this is one of the more un one of the more uh, more difficult free agency periods to kind of predict right now because I mean we we've seen it. I mean we've heard about the Connor Hellebuck speculation, the fact that he wants nine million a year or more. What, what's the market for that right now, even in a trade, right? Let alone, and so if that's the problem with teams right now, you know, in terms of spending money at the cat, at the free agency tomorrow, I mean, I, I don't know how much money is going to be flowing. And so we'll see. I, I, I'm interested to see what the Jets do because there are options out there. There's budget options out there. Um, you know, the, there's some good options, maybe to Shane or JT Comfer, who's going to be going to the, the market. And there's guys at the, this team can certainly augment its roster with it, it. It will be interesting to see if the Jets kind of flex some of that cap muscle that they have, though, and and, and try and make a big swing. Yeah, there's um, a lot. Of, there's a lot of and teams. If not, that, who knows? Yeah, a lot of those teams yeah. that maybe guys would naturally uh, want to go to first simply don't have those options. And right. um, you know, I I I I will say this. I mean, Remus mentioned that it was basically a de facto. GM's meeting convention in the uh, B terminal of Nashville yesterday. Oh, was and, it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and 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 you know, I did I did have a chance. I had a nice chat with Shovel with Kevin Shovel Day off, just um you know in the hallway as a bunch of the Jet staffs and the Lawonga mm-hmm. was behind it. It was actually kind of wild, but um it, you know whatever. We just had a little a chat about a bunch of things non hockey related, and, and then got into um the picks, but also um you know, uh, this upcoming, you know, few day period. And um, mm-hmm. obviously we knew that this news was coming today that had been well documented. But um, I, I think that, you know, more so than maybe people thought before, the Winnipeg Jets could be more of a player and, and, and you know, might be in on some players that before you wouldn't have thought that they may have had the opportunity. Yep. Um, and frankly, the fact that the cap hasn't gone up more, I think is definitely a positive for Winnipeg considering what they what they have right now uh, obviously i know you're going to be all over this in the sun uh, you know over the course of the next couple of days and we'll talk about it next week as the sort of the dust settles yeah um but listen just to, to move on i mean i know you did a bunch of work in the uh, um you know albeit from uh, from winnipeg uh, kind of tracking down yeah. people connected to the winnipeg jets pick and listen if you saw the show yeah. yesterday i mean i did that interview with colby barlow right after he came in and listen if you're a jet fan i mean you can't help but be excited about you know, a young man that seems to be so genuinely fired up to, to be a Winnipeg Jet. Um, but tell us about your conversations with some of his coaches and GMs beforehand. I mean, yeah. it just seems to reinforce um, <laughs> the love affair that a lot of people have had with this young man that has just continued growing as a player and as a leader and as a captain at such a young age in the OHL. Yeah, so I've spent... Uh, about half an hour on the phone yesterday uh, during the, the the draft, talking to Dale DeGray, who is the uh, the GM, and then I also talked to Glenn Walters. He's the uh, the uh, uh, the head coach uh, in Owen Sound, and so you know about an hour total talking to both those guys, trying to kind of you know piece together who Colby Barlow is to them, because I mean, it, it, and, and it was really interesting because DeGray, the first thing he says to me is like, I, you know, I was like, okay, so you make this guy your captain at 17. What went into that decision? And he's basically, you know, I was against it. <laughs> you know, he was like, I, I, it's not that I don't, he, like he didn't believe in, 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 in Colby Barlow or anything like that, but he's like, this kid's 17 and we got, you know, 20 year olds that probably are more deserving and are probably going to want it. But over the course, and, and the coaching staff, the coaching staff wanted it. Like, they wanted Colby Barlow to be, because they knew what the players were saying. 
And so Dale DeGray, you know, through exit interviews the season before and, and even in training camp, he's, he went up to all the veterans and he's like, are you sure? Like, you know, or, or, and to a man, he said, all of them like, yeah, like we want Colby to be our captain at 17 even. And so he was like, oh, okay. And so they made him his captain last September. I think it was September 28th. And then I think he had one goal in his first six games. And and one of the <laughs> so the quote he gave me yesterday, he said, and he's like, son of a bitch, I knew I was right. You know, like it was like, it was one of those things where he's like, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, I knew I, he shouldn't have been it, but he brought Colby into the room and they had a, a chat and, and, and Colby's like, yeah, there's nothing wrong right now. Right. Like I've been shooting it fine. And, and, and DeGray agreed with him. He's like, yeah, I put a few you know, five, five or six shots off the post and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, and eventually he scores 46 goals last year and, and, you know, has, you know, just a hell of a year in his draft year. And, and, but it was interesting to see like this debate that this team had where the coaching staff, the players, Colby's parents, his billets, like all, they, they went through this whole process to see if this 17 year old was ready to captain their team. And, and, you know, he was, and then you, you know, you listen to him talk and, and all those things. And, and you get a sense that, yeah, you know, the, his head coach, uh, Walters there, he talked, you know, he used to be a coach in Sarnia with, with Steven Stamkos. And he said, in terms of leadership and character, they're on the same level. He, he talked about Nick Suzuki, um, who he coached in Owen Sound. And he's like, you know, if Nick Suzuki can handle the captaincy in the Montreal Canadiens, like Colby Barlow is right up there with the same sort of leadership skills, right? So the Jets got a good one, you know, and I, I think, you know, listening to these guys, and of course, you know, the teams that, that drafted this guy and all that stuff are going to say all these good things, but but you just you listen to the kind of the things that they're saying. You li- you listen for consistency in the message and, and different things. And, and like these guys were saying the exact same thing as one another. And I was talking to them on two different separate phone calls. Like it was no one guy was in you know Toronto, the other guy was somewhere else. Like it, you know it, it, it's it was really interesting to to hear kind of how this kid who they draft never really saw him play because of the pandemic and and that sort of thing on this chance. You know, back in 2020, before the pandemic started, they, they, he, uh, Dale DeGray, the GM there, um, went and, 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 and was looking at a different game, but ended up seeing Colby Barlow based on some advice he got from a former PR guy. And that's when he, he filed two scouting reports that night on Barlow, and that's when it started. And they ended up taking him eighth in the OHL draft. And he thought he was lucky to get him at eighth. And he said, he's, he's, he's like, well, Kevin Sheldaf's even luckier to get him at 18. So, yeah, it's an interesting story. We'll see. I mean, obviously, Scholastic Player of the Year, all those types of things. I mean, if you look at Winnipeg's track record with drafting those Scholastic players, you can think of Josh Morrissey and Adam Lowry and Cole, uh, Cole Perfetti, and, 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 and there's more that I'm just forgetting right now. But, like, you know, there, there's good players that are still with the Winnipeg Jets. So, And the other one for me, too, is the Zachary Nehring, um draft pick. I think that's a shrewd move. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, he's a good player and, 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 and was projected, you know, potentially to go higher than he did, I think, in, on some people's boards. But the fact that this guy has roots in Manitoba, his mom from being from, from here and his grandparents still living here and that sort of thing, like, I, I think there was a genuine, uh, when he says he, you know, Winnipeg was one of the top teams or the top team on, where he wanted to go, Zachary. Um, I, I think there's truth to that. Um, you know, he's from Minot, not far from, I mean, four, four and a half hours south of here. I believe he's, uh, where is he going to college? Uh, he's going to play for the Sioux Falls Western Stampede. Michigan. He's going to play no, for the Sioux Falls Western Stampede Michigan. next year, and then, yeah, and then he's committed Western to Michigan. Western Michigan. Yeah. But again, things will change. And, you know, just on yeah. Nearing, um, you yeah. know, in that chat I had with Chevy yesterday at the airport, um, you know, I asked him a little bit about him, and he yeah. said, you know, that was a player that they uh, that they they really liked for a while. They um, you know, and it's the way that he played. And that was one of the things that Nearing, um, when I got a chance to talk to him yesterday in uh, Nashville or whatever, it was two days ago, that it's all just blurred yeah. into one long yeah. period of time. Um, you know, he was the first one to say that, you know, he prides himself on being a pain in the ass to play against. Um, mm-hmm. He's a pretty big guy. Like Kevin said, this is going to be a little bit of time before he grows into his body and uh, really becomes the, the, you know, the player that, you know, we'll expect to see at some point in the pro level. Um, yeah. But there's a, a, a lot of things about him that they liked. And then Mark Hillier. Uh, and, and listen, I don't think this is, well, it, I know it'll be received well, here on Winnipeg Sports Talk in the chat amongst Jet fans, that 
he sincerely said that, you know, Winnipeg was at the top of the list. I mean, he wanted to be yeah. a Jet. And and listen, that is that is important. And and again, I don't want to bring this back to Blake, but I will. Um, <laughs> I think part of, and again, this is a bit, uh, and like I get it. You know, you, we've had a big core of American players for, uh, for a long time here. And yeah. I think there was a sense and 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 some of this from Blake, some of this, you know, maybe larger, but I think he accentuated it. Um, like, for instance, when he said at the end of last season, I believe the quote was, well, there's no way I would have signed here if yeah. I didn't think that, you know, this team was on the verge of winning. Yeah, There has been a sense from some players um, that, you know, it's almost like, they're doing everybody a favor by coming here. Like, oh, right. you know, the, and 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 you know, that that can't be part of the conversation. No. Winnipeg is in the National Hockey League, and it's a very well-run organization. Uh, it's a well-supported team. Um, you know, you want players to come here because uh, and and be happy about it, not think that they are making some sort of a huge sacrifice to be mm -hmm. there. And and when Mark Hillier said that about it, I I mean, I got it. You know, you've got a lot of different ways. Um, to go, for instance, in a draft like this at that point in the third round. Um, but I, I really do think that, and this goes back to the culture change. And, and you know, these young men that were picked, probably Barlow and McGrory will be the biggest culture carriers, I'd imagine, in the future whenever they get here. Um, but, I mean, you, you don't want that to be part of the narrative. And, I mean, that can be the narrative when agents are talking to teams or whatever. But for guys that be here... You want to have them all in. You want to have them buying there, and you want to have them be positive about it, not think that they're yep. missing out on something else because this is where they're at in the NHL. And um, it was interesting to hear Mark, you know, basically say as much that yep. you know a big part of that. You know, there's a ton of talented kids that you can take a chance on. These are the sort of players that we want here in Winnipeg. And uh, I got to tell you, it was music to my ears. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, I think that that's one of the things that came out of Hillier's uh, thing was, and and that's why I, I I believe they made that pick because, I mean, he basically said you don't often hear that, right? Like you don't hear that in in their in their interviews, and so I think when you hear that from a guy who's also talented, right, you can hear that from a lot of players, you know, that maybe are projected to go, you know, in the late rounds. But here's a guy who, you know, maybe could have crept into the first, well, into the second at least, or whatever, and and. And yeah, he wanted to come to Winnipeg. I mean, you got to you got to take those guys, and and I think I think there's a part of that too in the end where those guys are also like they're going to try, they're going to try and make the team, they're going to try and make the team better, they're going to try and do everything they can to become a good NHL player. And so, yeah, I mean, I thought they did well with what they could at the at the draft. I mean, I, I like the Milich pick. I think I mean he's been passed over two years in a row. I think the one thing about him is he's got, he, he. I think he, there's just a th you know a chip on his shoulder. Here's a guy who, what else more could he do? Pretty good, <laughs> you know, pretty good resume. What else could he do? Yeah, what else <laughs> could he do to get drafted? I mean, this year, I mean, notwithstanding, I mean, he led the team. He led Team Canada to a gold medal, and he and and he led the the Seattle Thunderbirds to WHL championship, and then not far from a, a Memorial Cup win either. He was pretty close. They were close there, so. Yeah, I mean, what else could he have done? And, and this is the thing with Millich. I mean, probably because he's only six feet tall, which is tall for a lot of people, but not in the goalie world anymore. Um, potentially that got in the way of that or, you know, whatever. I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I think there's such, it's a weird thing with goalies now. Everybody wants them to be six foot six and wide and, and, and agile and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm... Uh, you know, I look at the draft, and I think they, you know, as they do often, you know, they get some good picks, and 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 they did well. They did well, and you could see it. I mean, you were there, but you know, I'm watching it on Sports, and I'm like, there is a lot of good players still available. And I, I think I tweeted out at, at, at ten. I'm like, oh, this is shaping out pretty nicely for the Jets. And by the time you get to like fifteen, it's like Jets have the pick of the litter. You know, like you know, I mean, there was so there was so much high end talent in that first round that. That yeah, I mean the Jets could have taken anybody almost at that pick. I mean Oliver Moore was still available, I believe. I mean a lot of guys that that, that were projected to be good. Gabe Perot, um, you know, and and he but went I all think all the way to twenty three yeah. with know, the New York I know. Rangers. And I, know. I said to yeah, Bell, it's crazy. I said to, I said to yeah. Button, like right afterwards, because again, I mean, you know, we've talked and you read some of the lists, but I mean, I, I don't know these junior players and. Um, you know, I was kind of yeah. thinking. I, I we talked a lot about Moore with some of the guys, and I, you know, just from 
you know, kind of my conversation of like, oh, that'd be an exciting pick for Jet fans. And I mean, obviously I'd seen Colby Barlow's name, but I didn't know a lot about him. And I mean, Button mm -hmm. right off the bat, I mean, he basically admitted that he was his draft crush this year. And then, mm -hmm. I mean, listen, it, it took all of 10 seconds talking to the young man to realize that yeah. um, there is another part of what he brings to the table. I mean, listen, it just, it felt like Rucker McGrory 2.0. That yeah. is going to be a real positive thing. Billick, listen, we got to run. Roy, he's jumping on here, but mm -hmm. um, I know you're uh, not quite into long weekend <laughs> mode. Um, yeah. I'll look forward to uh, all of your coverage tomorrow in the Winnipeg Sun. And uh, I'll tell you what, next week when you jump on with us on a short week, uh, we're going to have a lot more to talk about because I have a feeling this roster is going to look even different yep. again uh, after that. Thanks a lot for doing this. and. Yep. Uh, Crack a cold one whenever you're uh, done. Uh, well, maybe get a couple in tonight, but get a good sleep. And then uh, we'll uh, we'll chat with you next week on all of it. Thanks for doing this, buddy. All right. Yeah, there's anytime, us. guys. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yep. Good stuff. There's a Scott Billick. All right, just before we bring in Rue, I've shout out to our friends at Vita Health. Big grilling uh, weekend coming up. Hey, listen, in addition to great prices on natural and organic supplements, beauty products, and groceries, Vita Health Fresh Market has Winnipeg's largest assortment of local products, too, including amazing and delicious Vita Market grass fed bison and beef steaks for the grill. And uh, heck, you know what? There's going to be a lot of eating going on, I would say. Uh, don't forget about things like Garden of Life formulas like Prostate Protect and Once Daily Men's, available at Vita Health to support men's gastrointestinal health. Pop down and see them. One of seven Winnipeg locations, Vita Health Fresh Market, empowering people to lead healthy lives. Uh, and you can also check them out online with local delivery options at myvita. Dot .ca. Uh, hey, you don't want to be spending the weekend building a fence, do you? Probably not. If you do have fencing needs or overhead door, talk to the experts at Wallace and Wallace who've been doing it in Winnipeg since 1946. Uh, whatever sort of fence you need, they've got vinyl, vinyl, ornamental, welded wire, chain link, or wood. And if you need a new garage door, check out their largest selection in the city of overhead garage doors. 452-2700. Wallace and Wallace will arrange a time to come out and give you a free estimate. You can also check them out online at wallacefences.com or pop down to their showroom on Lawson Road off of Keniston. Uh, fellas, I know we'll be wearing t-shirts and shorts this weekend, but if you need to up your menswear game heading into wedding season in the fall, you need to get on down to F Apparel. Custom suits beginning at 400 bucks, along with chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, and an incredible selection of menswear accessories. They've got a 15% discount for wedding parties, and uh, you'll uh, be able to get the gang looking great for the big day and instead of returning a tux afterwards have a great suit to wear into the new season pop down and see him f apparel 190 smith street and you can make an appointment or find out more online at f that's e p h apparel.com and just before we bring in brandon or it's going to be hot candidate weekend mix in a trip to our friends nick and nicky at down on one of the four nick and nicky dq summer blizzard flavors are here um and to keep the uh Kids with a smile on their face, maybe grab a couple racks of uh, Dilly Bars, Buster Bars, and all their great ice cream novelties that go great in the freezer. Uh, four locations, DQ Northgate, DQ Polo Park, DQ St. Anne's, and DQ Niverville. Pop by and make, uh, let uh, Nick and Nikki deal with it. Uh, you jumped on and uh, are a big fan of theirs from their uh, support of Winnipeg Sports Talk. All right, draft in the rearview mirror on to free agency. Big news today, the bio to Blake Wheeler. Let's get Brandon Rewicki in, the host of Skates and Plates, who I'm sure has had a lot to talk about on the pod this week. Rue, what is going on, man? How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How, how are you doing? I, I'm, it's nice to see you. Like, I mean, a couple days in, in Nash Vegas, and I was, I was a little worried you'd be looking worse for the wear, but skin shining, looking yeah. good, long weekend. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I mean, listen, we did have a great time, um, but for all, and I mean, I do have a reputation as a guy that enjoys a good time, and listen, there was a lot, but but there was just so much uh, work to do, um, and uh, we didn't kind of raise as much hell as I would have liked. Um, I blame Remus, of course, because he needed to get back to the family. I was more than willing on extending the stay till Saturday or so. Oh, we should be there for free agency. Uh, it didn't fly. <laughs> we made it back. What was truly challenging, though, was the five-hour delay on our flight. And, of course, we flew out of Fargo. So uh, that 
2 to 5 a.m. drive last night. That that was crunch time, but uh. Uh, managed to turn it around, got here for it, and, uh, man, we've got a lot to get to. Um, Listen, uh, there's a few jet things I want reaction to you right off the bat, but let's start with the big news of the day, uh, the significance of the Blake Wheeler buyout for this organization moving forward. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, it's it's all about the culture. Like, it, it, it's a culture setter, right? Like, that's the main... I mean, it might be the only reason that they're doing this, to be honest, because it's, it's pretty obvious the team themselves think that he's still got a decent amount to give, I think, buoyed by the fact that they tried so desperately to trade him for so long, right? I mean, they you, you don't do that to somebody that you think is washed and has nothing left to give. Um, so that's the main thing moving forward, is that this isn't really... Jets 2.0, it's like Jets 2.1 or Jets 2.10 right now. Like, it's just, it's a new era that that we're about to embark in. Um, I don't think it necessarily signifies a rebuild or anything like that, but it, it, it just, to a lesser extent, is kind of like what we saw out there in Minnesota a few years ago um, and maybe to an extent what we're seeing with Nashville right now. Um, it, it, it just that, you know, even with the step of taking the C last year, you truly can't move on from somebody as 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 massive to this organization and, and to this city sports wise without having him outside of your locker room. And, and so I, you know, might, might be a year too late, but I, I think this is certainly the right move by the team here. And, and we'll see what happens with Wheeler, where he ends up going. Sounds like maybe the East coast, but I, I just, I never truly felt like the jets could move on as an organization without saying goodbye to the two Titans inside that locker room. And now, one of them's gone. We'll see if the other one's out the door in, you know, a day or two or, or maybe a little bit longer than that. But it's the first step. It's the right step. And uh, we'll see how the Jets find a way to move forward with uh, a handful of cap space they didn't have earlier. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, listen, can't, uh, you know, kind of get into what's going forward of free agency um, without talking about not necessarily the draft picks. I mean, those exciting young players will be here in the future. Um what did you think of the return uh, for a Pierre-Luc Dubois and the job Kevin Shovel day off, considering the predicament the Jets were in? I mean, B-plus sounds fair, doesn't it? Like, it's not it's not the, the by-field double-decker homer, but, like, that'll clear the bases. Like, that'll, that'll get the job. I, I would, like, probably put it like that. I mean, we all knew that it was essentially going to be some combination of uh, Velarde, Ayafalo, and then we'll see what the pieces are after that. But I think just the fact that the Jets didn't have to give up any assets, even though they would have been minor ones, and then were able to pick up a depth forward and a second round pick, and it being Montreal's on top of it. That, that was the I best. I mean, that's that right. The- like that, that's the, the the series on top, right? Like I mean, that's as good as it gets. So I I think Chevy again did tremendous work, and it's isn't it wild, man? That like there's I said this on 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 skates and plates yesterday. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no GM in pro sports, not hockey, but pro sports, that does more when backed into a corner than Kevin Chevalier. Like, it's crazy. And and he's to play. I mean, he put himself in these predicaments, so I'm not going to like totally let him off the hook there. But, I mean, we just see GMs all the time get bent over a barrel when they're in situations like this and get pennies on the dollar. And, and here's Chevy getting some pretty damn good value for a guy that everybody knew was out the door there. So it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't my dream proposal, but I think like a lot of people digging into Velarde a little bit more, like it's, there's a little bit of excitement coming this way. And I, I, I think, you know, maybe more so than anything, just hearing, I think both Velarde and Ayafalo say, we're, we're excited to be here and we want to be here. It's like, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's where we're at with, with Winnipeg, but that's a, that's a damn good first step. And he's going to get a ton of opportunity. And that's, that's why I've always been a proponent of the Jets being more active in the trade market. You get some young guys in here, and you know what? They might have been highly touted prospects, but they're getting second, third line minutes with their previous team. Now you get a chance to be a borderline top dog, and that's really exciting. And we'll see how far Velarde's going to take it. Can he be just a solid second line guy, or can he develop into something more impactful for the Jets that ultimately is going to determine how much of a win this was for the team? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I uh, in my conversations with a bunch of the guys down at the draft about the trade and about Chevy, I mean, it kind of referred to him as a, an escape artist, if you will. I mean, he's the Darcy Oak of National Hockey League general managers right now, and not. Uh, Listen, I think they did a pretty good job, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what these guys bring both on the ice and as part of, you know, having a significant shakeup of a number of players. And 
Uh, I think the biggest beneficiary of this is going to be Rick Bonus because I think he truly will have the opportunity to sort of, um, you know, build on what happened at the start of last year, which was trying to do things a, di- a little bit of a different way and, and, you know, and creating a new culture. And, you know, whenever the likes of a Colby Barlow and a Rucker McGrory join this hockey club, along with Brad Lambert and Chaz Lucius, um, you know, I think we're on the verge of, um, you know, an exciting new direction. And I can already tell from fans, some of the ones that were the most disgruntled about where the team was at, um, a very different sort of atmosphere, uh, you know, at least amongst the fan base when they're having these Jets conversations. And um, and that is a uh, that is a very, very good thing. Um, we won't spend much on the Barlow deal, but, you know, I just saw, I just saw somebody in here refer to... Uh, Barry Trotz is the CEO of Molly Maid, who is cleaning house. Uh, that is right, M. Dude. Um, you know, and, and listen, I guess part of the reason why maybe we shouldn't be so surprised that Hellebuck is still a Winnipeg Jet right now, Mark Shifley is still a Winnipeg Jet right now, is the trades that were made. I mean, I, basically all the trades were one for zero, Brandon. I mean, here's a guy for nothing. I mean, when Taylor Hall is going to the worst team in the league, essentially for young RFAs that may or may not stick with the Boston Bruins, I think it tells you what you want. Ryan Johansson's moving on, and Nashville is eating half of his cap. They obviously didn't have a taker for Matt Duchesne. Um, it, it, it's a fascinating landscape going into tomorrow. Um, and the one thing Winnipeg has is cap space. And I think it's very clear there's going to be opportunity for some players to come in. And, you know, maybe it's a shorter term deal, but they can come in and, you know, get a chance from Rick Bonus that they wouldn't have in other markets to sort of resuscitate their career and start over. I, I'm really looking forward to these next few days and seeing the way this Jets lineup looks post the first few days of free agency and then what that means for the Hellebuck and Shifley situation going forward. Because I mentioned earlier, and I don't know whether you agree, Normally, things sort of shut down in the NHL for after the first week of free agency for the better part of six weeks. With this flat cap and players like them on the market, I think once the dust settles on free agency, I think a lot of GMs will circle back and sort of think a little bit longer and harder about how trades might be able to be made. And uh, it's a good thing for those of us to give us something to talk about for the next couple of months before we get to September. Yeah, I mean, what, what's wild to me is that, especially just with the Shafley Hellebuck situations, is... You know, it's not ideal. The franchise doesn't like doing it, but you're you're probably going to have to retain on both of those guys. And that's wild to say on Shifley when he's making like six million on on Shifley is still a bargain, right? But you're probably going to have to retain another couple mil just to make a deal palatable for somebody out there. And you know, if you want a legitimate return, you, you might have to go for the full fifty percent. That's just insane. To open. Yeah, it, it is. Like it, it shouldn't be that way, but but it is. And if you want to get a bidding war going, I mean, having a guy at three mil and then the having the ability to take some money back being Winnipeg, that might be your only avenue here. So we'll, I, I'm fascinated to see how the Jets come out of this. I think at this point, though, like, I mean, to me, it's not an it's not imperfect because I've I've always wanted him back, but I just I don't see a way that that Connor Hellebuck gets moved right now. Like, I think the Jets start the season with Connor Hellebuck as their number one. Um, I, I do think we'll see a Mark Shifley trade happen. I don't. I don't know when. Like you said, there it might. It might be midway through July. Somebody's like, oh, you know, our plans A and B didn't work. Let's circle back here and and figure something out. But I mean, it doesn't sound like there's a big market for him, anyways, because nobody wants to pay a Vesna quality goalie nine million dollars, essentially what what they're worth. And it doesn't seem like there is a bullish market out for him in terms of the assets coming back. And I, I you can't really blame Chevy when the whole system is just going stagnant right now. And I just I don't think he's a guy you give away for nothing. And if you have to start the season with him and revisit it at the deadline, then I think that's just the best way to go about it. But I, I do ultimately believe that we will see Mark Scheife get moved here. But I don't know. To, to see all four of the core four in Winnipeg be moved before game one, I, I just don't see it happening with the way the rest of the offseason's played out. Yeah, and uh, and again, I don't think this is going to surprise anyone considering my feelings for Hellebuck. Um, I if he was back next year and was a huge part of a team that has a big resurgence, I mean, you could even make an argument that, you know, rolling with him throughout the season, I mean, listen, if you have the opportunity to get big-time assets going forward, but if those assets aren't there, um, 
He's a complete game changer for your team and your organization, and there is value to that as well. I sir, I don't think that's the same with Mark Shifley. I mean, I think that when Shifley is gone, there will be, similar to Wheeler, there will be some addition by subtraction as far as the culture of this club. And I see B.A. and Maul in there talking about extension. As I said, I'm open for a Ryan Friesen type bet with chat room. So if you would like to make that, I'm in. <laughs> I am in on that. Um, but Hellebuck coming back. Um, and, and here's the other thing, Brandon. Maybe the Winnipeg Jets can work something out on a short-term extension for Connor Hellebuck. Maybe it's a year or two years that pays him what he deserves and gives time for the cap to go up. And maybe that gives Chevy a little bit of wiggle room to still make some sort of a deal to a place that he wants to go to get him his extension and doesn't have the Jets leaving for nothing. I guess there's the other opportunity is that, you know, listen, if this team is a playoff team and they feel they've got a chance to win, uh, and, you know, he's obviously a huge part of it, um, you know, you go through the season and at the end, you start talking with teams on trading his rights for something if he does extend. It's obviously not going to be what you'd get. But again, we're talking about one year left in a tight cap situation. Do teams want Hellebuck? Absolutely. Can most of them afford him? No. And listen, the guy has earned his spot amongst NHL goalies right now, and he deserves to get that. And listen, if there's not a long-term deal right now, um, I wouldn't entirely rule out maybe sticking around for another year or two, although I don't think that there's going to be any seven, eight-year extension for Hellebuck spending the rest of his time here in Winnipeg. As it pertains to tomorrow, and I'm not sure if you've had, I mean, obviously we've got some of the news today of a, the Duchesne buyout. Um, there are some new names on the uh, on the free agent um, possibilities list. Uh, anyone that stands out or any area right now if you're Kevin Shevel Day off that you're really targeting tomorrow when you're picking up the phone to talk to these guys for the first time? No. No. <laughs> no. Like, no. <laughs> That's I, don't, I, don't know. I don't know if you pick up the phone to any agent tomorrow. Like, I I mean, that, that, that's usually the best way to go about free agency anyways is just like, Go to the cabin for July one, and then we'll resume business after the week. You know what I mean? Like it's there's a lot more poison pills than there are franchise saviors out there on the first of July. But this year in particular, there's just there's there's nothing really there. I mean, the one the one guy that I would have liked, but there's just such a logjam here. I I mean Carson Soucy being available, I think would be a nice fit for a lot of teams, but the, the Jets already have to get rid of what two defensemen, and all likelihood, the, like let alone bringing in somebody. From the outside, like I, I just don't see it really working out there. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, there's, there's nobody that really jumps out in a big way other than Domestikov. But am I going to break the bank for for a Vladdy Domestikov? Not, not necessarily because he hasn't really, outside of that brief stint in the second half of the season with Winnipeg, he's kind of bounced around everywhere, and I think there's a reason for that. I, I think he just sit it out in terms of guys that are available. But you know, again, I, I feel like there's an opportunity for Winnipeg here. And you mentioned it with basically teams giving guys away for free, like hit the trade market hard. It doesn't have to be, you know, specifically just Shifley and Hellebuck, but there's got to be a couple of teams out there that are willing to give away a guy that's making four or five million dollars that can help you up front, that can help you maybe on the back end on the right side, right? Like there's, I think there's opportunities there to be had. I, I just don't think there's any on the free agent market. So yeah, I'm good. I'll sit that one out and. We'll circle back in, in the middle of July. That's that's usually the best way to go about the free agent class. I know everybody always loses their mind that nobody wants to come to Winnipeg, but should flip it and be like, no, nobody wants to get signed on July 1. Like, you want to stay away from that. That's usually where all these buyouts and trades end up happening is because of these contracts <laughs> signed on July Great 1. Great point. Great point. Uh, Brandon Ruwicki's with us. Make sure to check out the uh, Skates and Plates podcast wherever you get Winnipeg Sports Talk and give them a sub over there for more great Jets content. Um Ruiki, let's talk about the draft for a minute, and we'll get back to. I mean, we spent a lot of time talking about how impressive Colby Barlow was, and well, let me just ask you, what did you think about him? I mean, I, I don't expect you to know. Say, oh, I went through all of his game tape for the last two seasons, and this is what he is. I mean, man, the guy can shoot the puck, but um, you know, as far as this culture change that we've been talking about so much, I mean, it kind of started. I feel with the energy with Rucker McGrory brings to the organization whenever he gets here. 
Um, as I said, it took me 10 seconds to talk to this guy in Nashville, and it gave me a Rucker McGroarty vibe. And certainly that was something that was echoed by Kevin Sheveldayoff, a number of people of the, uh, of the, uh, in the organization. Um, exciting first round pick. And again, you know, at that spot in the middle of the first round, we knew there was a ton of talent. We knew there'd be some players there to think that they had the choice of Gabe Perot, Oliver Moore, Colby Barlow. Um, it ended up being a great spot for the Jets to be in. And uh, man, they look like they got a keeper. Yeah, you know, I went down to Owen Sound earlier this year in anticipation. <laughs> now, I mean, it's it, you're right. It's so fun. Like even even like the David Reinbacher stuff. Like everyone freaking out. Oh, he's not like oh. So you watched Austrian junior hockey this year, and you spent all this time out. <laughs> like it's, people are so ridiculous. Everyone's a draft expert, and people have seen maybe thirty seconds of each of the prospects. Having said that, the Flyers are back because Mitchkov is here. Uh, but no, I I I love. I, I, how do you not love the Barlow pick? Like he's. I, I wouldn't – like, I saw somebody mention that this is similar to when the, the Jets drafted Kyle Connor at 17. I, I don't think I would go that far. Like, Connor was a really special case and, and thank Boston for making it possible. But, that, like, I, I don't know if I would go that far. Shout out Jacob but... Zvorl and Zachary <laughs> Sinitian. Yeah. <laughs> Man, they exactly, get marbles yeah. today. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But but I I don't know. He reminds me just, – just watching his highlights, he reminds me a lot of Tyler Toffoli. Like, he, he's just he's, he's just going to be a solid, solid middle of the lineup guy at the very least. And I I, I don't know. You could do a lot worse at 18. I mean, to, to me, the, the Jets probably drafted like a 30-30 guy. You know, I, he's going to be a second-line player here in Winnipeg for a long, long time. And he seems like a beauty as well. The Jets love drafting smart guys. He's another scholastic player of the year. I, I like I don't it, it's pretty rare for for a draft pick to not really have a whole lot of negatives attached to him. I, I didn't see anybody really throw it any negative connotations to the Jets taking him there at 18. I, I, I like the pick a lot. I like it more than, than Gabe Pro, even though he lit up um, the U.S. Um, national development team there. So I, I think the Jets did very, very well for themselves at 18. And I'm like a lot of people as well. If you can draft a world junior WHL champion goalie in round five or six, that, that's a pretty solid late flyer to take as well. Well, I, listen, all the guys done everywhere is win. He's had an amazing save percentage everywhere. We saw how good he was against the Winnipeg Ice in the finals. And the great thing about Milich is, is that um, he's turning pro right now. <clears throat> I mean, he's going to be in all likelihood getting tons of time with the Manitoba Moose. And for normally, I mean, you pick like Dom DiVincentis that was picked. He was the OHL goaltender of the year. He's got a great future. Still a long time away. Milich, you've advanced two years on that. Yeah. And, um, you know, with the voodoo that is goaltending, uh, I think he's probably a little bit more clear. I think if people knew what they know now, they probably would have picked him in the last couple of years, to yeah. be perfectly honest. So, yeah. What's always funny, too, is people are just like, oh, well, he was always on great teams. That's why he wins. Well, you know, sometimes great goalies make good teams great. <laughs> <laughs> There's that possibility, too. So let's just let, let's give the a kid a few a other bit goalies of available here. in Canada to play on the world junior team. And start yeah. <laughs> just just saying. <laughs> hey, you mentioned just we'll we'll uh, honor your flyerdom for a minute. Uh, I was thinking about you in Nashville when uh, they picked Mitchkoff. Uh, how excited are you for that? Uh, I'll tell you what, Philly. Um, I mean, that is a team that obviously is going in a very very different direction right now. Um, they realize that their time is not now. Um, very, very intriguing pick. And uh, you got to be excited when you put your Flyers hat on with uh, that number seven overall selection. It's great. Yeah. I mean, like the last few days, it's just been like it, it actually happened. Like <laughs> they actually like the, luck went the Flyers way for the first time. And how many like it's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's wild to think, you know, at the trade deadline might have been the franchise's low point. And I mean, like in history, <laughs> like people were so insanely infuriated with the Fletcher regime and and rightfully so but like to go from that moment to a couple months later where it's like the the clouds are lifted and everything's like we're we're, we're back now like we got a chance like it's 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 wild to me and and that's that's what taking a guy like that is right i mean it's it's a game changer for them and it's wild too that they didn't have to you know didn't have to tank didn't have to you know do this and this but you're able to let the chips fall in in, in the perfect way and you get a generational score. Paul to you at seven. Like that, that's that's what he is. He's everyone's saying the best Russian prospect since Ovechkin. And it's just it's, it's is he crazy. good? How, how did he turn out? 
yeah, yeah, it turned out pretty good, pretty good. So I'll, I'll, I'll deal with something a little bit lesser than that. Um, but yeah, it's it's just it's it's wild. It's wild how quickly the fortunes of a whole franchise can change um, on on draft night. Uh, Chicago's the same way, and I, I think Philly, in, in, to a lesser extent, is in a similar boat now. Hey, listen, just while we got you, uh, before we go, um, and I listen, I, I have to apologize to Bomber fans because this has been such a huge week. We've been in, in Nashville. We haven't talked a lot about the Bombers, and maybe that's good because for the first time in a long time, they had a real dud to talk about considering last week. Um, but, Brandon, uh, w- how prepared should the Montreal Alouettes be for a very pissed-off Winnipeg Blue Bomber team going in there for Canada uh, for Canada today for a little bit of fireworks on the road considering what happened last week at IG Field. Kind of, kind of reminds me of Rocky Three, man. Like the ball, like the Bombers, the Bombers are Rocky Balboa going up against Mr. T against the Lions, but they've like they're they're ready to go. They're back there. I, I yeah, it's going to be ugly. I, I don't know what the spread is in this one. Taking the spread with the Bombers, taking the over big time. It's I yeah, I mean I I, I found myself insanely spoiled watching that Lions game where it's like <laughs> you're kind of in disbelief watching it. And then you have to be reminded that this is like the third home loss we've seen in five years. <laughs> it's like it's they just, haven't it's lost great. to a West team at home since 2018. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, we again, we've been so spoiled here in Winnipeg for so long that it's like a bit of a reality check. Like, okay, they're allowed to lose. They're allowed to stinker once in a while. But, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a bloodbath out there in, in Montreal. So God bless, Alouettes. Have fun. Uh, do you have a uh, just because obviously there's not going to be a show? Well, actually, there will be a show on Tuesday when it's happened, but we won't speak to you. Uh, do you have a prediction for Joey Chestnut hot dogs and buns oh. on the 4th of July? I can't watch that stuff, man. I can't. Over, over, over 74 and a half as one as plus 100, and a record 77 would be plus 225 on the cool bet lines. Ever, ever since, like, I don't know when the dipping in the water started. Like dipping the ever since that happened though I'm Kobayashi, out on Kobayashi changed yeah, the that's game. That's too much. That's <laughs> like to, to to me it's not a hot dog eating competition unless there's mustard, onions, relish on each dog. Like you can't like I I, I don't know I've, I've just never been a I, I, maybe I'm like a purist that way. But like do you dip a dog in water when you eat it at a barbecue? Hell no, right? Like you, you, put, a <laughs> you put a little bit extra on it. So until until they do that, I am out on competitive eating for good. Uh, I love it. And you know what? You, my friend, you are a hot dog guy. You never mentioned ketchup. Shout out to you for that. And mustard, relish, onions, the perfect dog. Yeah. We should go for one sometime soon. Hey, enjoy the weekend. Have a great long one. Congratulations again on the new addition. Uh, not Mitch Koff, uh, the one to Team Ruiki. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I'll look forward to uh, catching up with you next week, dude. Yeah, no, it, it, it's good he came a couple weeks before that, or else there might have been a Matt Favor wiki in, in the household there. But yeah, appreciate <laughs> that, brother. We'll talk soon. Right on, right on. There's Brandon Rewiki again, skates and plates wherever you get your uh, get your favorite podcasts. Uh, all right, speaking of those bombers, as I mentioned, um, you know we'll have plenty of bomber talk next week and really dive in a little bit more. Again, I, I, I do feel a little guilty. There's only so much time, and we have had so much going on, obviously being on the road in Nashville and coming back today with the news of the Blake Wheeler buyout. Um, but when we're talking bombers on this program, we do it for Princess Auto. and cannot wait to get back out there July 7th, the bombers' next home game. And the place to be before kickoff, of course, is the Princess Auto tailgate zone just outside the stadium. 350 popping hot dogs, $5 beers, DJ finesse spinning, OB pregame show with DT, Doug Brown, and the gang. Uh, we'll see you there uh, and hopefully be talking about a 3 and one team that absolutely massacres their opponents this weekend after uh, getting their lunch handed to them last week at home by the British Columbia Lions. Princess Auto, two locations in the city. Visit them there. Shop online 24-7, 365 at princessauto.com. Proud sponsors, the Bombers, Gold Eyes, and your boys here at Winnipeg Sports Talk. Um, speaking of great supporters of ours, shout out to Spicy Joe, the gang of Consolidated Supply. I hope they have a great long weekend, uh, but I'm sure they've been busy this week getting people ready for maybe a little work on this long weekend as the leader in 
irrigation systems, artificial turf, golf carts, both new and used as the exclusive Cub Car dealer in Manitoba, and other great options for your property that, uh, tell you what, might come in pretty damn well this weekend. Outdoor kitchens, as well as hot tubs, and of course, they are the leaders in small engine parts and repair. Pop by and see Consolidated Supply at the showroom, open to the public, 1395 Niagara Road East, or find out more online at cte.ca. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt that the undisputed, undefeated best store in the city is Royal Sports, Manitoba's real superstore for over 40 years. In fact, our next guest, I've bumped into him at Royal a few times. Um, Royal, you'll be able to get your Colby Barlow jersey, Rucker McGrory, or uh, maybe a Gabriel Velarde. We'll figure out what numbers guys are wearing before you head on down to uh, down to Royal. Uh, but whether it's Jets, Bombers, your favorite local teams. How about those Seabears, by the way? Seabears lids in. Big win last night. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But um, spring stock is uh, here. Summer stock is here. Soccer, baseball, softball, tennis, disc golf, tons of bikes. Get on down there to Royal Sports and make the most of summer. And uh, grab all your best, best fan gear as well at the same time. And follow them on Instagram at Royal Sports Pemina. You never know what cool merchandise is dropping. Oh, by the way, if you need Yeti products for the long weekend, uh, massive Yeti section there. Pop by there before you hit the road to uh, make the most of the next few days. 750 Pemina Highway. And again, on Insta at Royal Sports Pemina. And hey, tomorrow, if you are in town, you're looking for a spot to get together with the gang to watch the Bombers and the Alouettes. You need a little AC. You need some ice-cold schooners, some amazing wings, some gourmet pizzas. You know where to do it. Your local Boston pizza. Big game will be on with big sound wherever uh, you uh, at any BP that's close to you. And, hey, if you are staying at home tonight or throughout the long weekend, you could always order online at, at uh, online at bostonpizza.com. And yes, just before we bring in our next guest, a very special guest for his first ever visit on WST, big shout out to the Sea Bears. They did it again, the number one team in the CEBL, down 11 at home at halftime, no problem, battle back one by three. What a, What an awesome season it has been at the Sea Bears so far this year and uh, cannot wait to get out for the next couple games and we'll see what happens. They're looking pretty good to be in part of that final tournament out in Vancouver in their inaugural season. Um, now, as we bring in the next guest, um, you know, whether we're talking Sea Bears, whether we're talking our friends at the Gold Eyes, whether it's a bomber game at IG Field, whether it's the Jets, whether it's the Moose, whether it was the Ice while they were here, hell, the Bisons or U of W Westman games, there's one constant here in the city of Winnipeg when it comes for sports fans, and that is our guy Dancing Gabe doing his thing. Um, there is no one that is more synonymous with our community and our sports teams than Dancing Gabe. And uh, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome in our old pal from our old shop, Ace Burpee, who's uh, putting something pretty cool together that I think everyone can get behind for the legend, Gabe Langlois. Ace, what is up, man? Awesome to have you on the program. What's good, dude? Um, I screwed up Remus' thing, if you want the truth. <laughs> you, 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 you had a hand in the, uh, in the laptop disaster from yesterday in Nashville? <laughs> no, like, because, like, there's, there's, Two of them. I don't know. How do I stop that? Oh, you're looking good. You're you're, you're all good, man. You are. You you're sure? all good. You got that. You got your. I see the live stream. Yeah. And then yeah. you see yourself, and you see Hustler. There you go. Hustler solo. Yeah. I think so you're now, good. Now you look good and right. sound good, Ace. Yeah, it's uh, it, it is it is <laughs> all good. There's no issue. You have not screwed anything up. In fact, you've. Uh, you brighten the show. Lots of welcomes to the Ace Man in the WST chat. Uh, not just for you and Bailey. And I know you've checked out the show before. Uh, it, there's no way to boost your stock as a WST guest than bringing a dog into the shot. So uh, Bailey's there. The ball game. How you been, man? What's going on? How are you? Uh, I am well, and uh, you're talking a lot about. Uh... What's going on? We can hear you. You're all good. Just let her rip. Ace, can you hear us? Yeah, it's like 
delayed like seven to nine seconds. Oh, hmm. You know what? Maybe just jump out and then just come back in. That's the easiest way to do that if you're hearing everything on it. We'll figure it out. I'll jump Look out at all something. these comments for Ace. Welcome, Ace. Great Winnipeg's whip hat, whips hat. Love the doggy. Best guest who brings their puppy on right from the start. Yes, we knew that. Doug Ace is a Winnipeg legend. Uh, he, uh, you guys lost Huss. Maybe there was some sort of an issue with us or something like that, Remo. Mm. He needs a banner at Canada Life. All right, Ace, how are you? Can you uh, can you hear me now in uh, in real time? Hmm. Remo, this is the, this is one of the first times I've never had this. I don't know. Re re reboot on all end. Ace getting love in the chat. The best Winnipegger of uh, of all time. Um. Well, Ace, I'll tell you what, if you're having a tough time hearing me, um, maybe we won't do as much going back and forth, but I can tell you, everyone is welcoming you as we do. It is great to have you on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Uh, why don't you fill us in on what you have put together for our great friend, the one and only Dancing Gabe, um, how this has come together why it's important and uh, listen I, I, i'll say this in 2023 we know how divided our community can be um how political some things get <clears throat> how contentious some issues are i don't know if there's one thing that is more unanimously loved in this city than gabe langlois and uh, of course you uh, you and your team of um credit to you for for thinking about this and putting together a, a movement to try to try to help our pal uh, dancing gabe going forward uh, fill us in on uh, on what's going on in the gofundme if you wouldn't mind can i go i'm so sorry it, it could be um who knows side note for those in the chat royal sports what's up be a new fishing hat Need a new fit for walking down Gordon. Rip that. Yeah, so quickly, and sorry about the audio. Who, who knows? But that's why. Um, yeah, so a few months ago, in conversation with Gabe's sister, Claudette, she's amazing. She is his primary caregiver. There would be no dancing, Gabe, if it wasn't for Claudette behind the scenes. And she's stressed about um, the future of Gabe. If something happens with her, who looks after Gabe? These are things she thinks about I can make. So we put together this uh, GoFundMe, Secure Gabe's Future, doing very well. Brought to like tons of issues in this community about those who are aging out of being able to care for their children. It's a massive conversation. It's opened up all kinds of conversations, and it's really, really good. I hope this is okay. I'm so sorry if you want to like do it again or whatever, but it's a GoFundMe. Four good sisters to look after Gabe long term. Doing well. I think we cracked 40 grand today. Uh, go fund me your game future. It is there and we appreciate it. I'm so sorry about the audience. I don't know. We must be filling it behind the scenes. I screwed it up. New hat, new glove. I got to break it in. I got so much going on here. Ace, you know what? It's uh, it's awesome. And as they say, Remus, uh, just, Remus, just keep that up there for one second if you can. Um, the GoFundMe is, and we will have the uh, the the link here. Um, in the chat, we'll also have the link in the description of the video. Uh, but it's securing Gabe's future. Um, we're looking to try to raise a hundred thousand um, dollars to uh, make sure Gabe's in a good place going forward. Um, and man, what a what an incredible response so far from Winnipeg. And I have no doubt that this was going to be uh, a huge success. At now forty one thousand one hundred sixty five, and that is before our donations here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. And Michael and I will certainly be getting behind this um, now that we're back. Um, and uh, and I know that, um, listen, there's so many different things that people can support right now. And God knows our community, there's a lot of things that, uh, a lot of needs. Um, but Ace, as sports guys, um, and as Winnipeggers, and as people that have grown up, I mean, going to games, um, I mean, he is synonymous with it. And uh, I'm not sure you're going to find anyone that is more a part of the fabric of our city that Gabe is and has been for decades um, and does it with a, uh, I mean, just, I mean, the, the, he's got the, the heart um, that I think in a lot of ways 
speaks to Winnipeggers, no matter how old you are, where you're from. Um, if you spend time in Winnipeg, you know about Dancing Gabe. And uh, to your point about Claudette, I mean, it was sometimes when uh, I'll see Gabe out at a game, um, obviously he's running around. He's usually taken on the bus. I'll give him a ride home and, you know, find out a little bit more about, you know, how things are there. And he always speaks to, you know, how well he's taken care of. But um, at this point, I mean, you know, people do get older. And I think a lot of this was, uh, I mean, just a great proactive move by you that, um, you know, in these situations where people do have primary caregivers, um, nothing is forever in life. And um, this is uh, this is something to make sure that um, we as Winnipeg sports fans and our community are there for Gabe uh, at a time when, um, you know, things could significantly change. And those things can change, you know, in a matter of moments, to be honest. Yeah. Um, again, my apologies here. Hopefully this comes through. The show is amazing. And what you and Remus have been able to do is literally unprecedented in, in this town. It might be honestly like one of the most significant achievements in broadcasting history in this town. No joke. You guys, I love you at, like so much. And you've fulfilled an enormous, enormous need and gap in this town. And I'm serious. Like you mean the world to so many different people. So if I screwed up my um, debut, we'll do it. Uh, we'll run it back another time. You know I'm always ready. And uh, so yeah, Secure Dancing Gabe's future, again, brought to light a ton of issues surrounding those aging out of being able to care for their children. It's enormous. Our work is just starting. We start with Gabe. We raise awareness, bring these issues out. There's tons of program support people don't know about, massive. Awesome. Thank you. Gabe, I, I tell you what, Ace, um, as I said, we will do this again soon. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to stay on top of this. And uh, as I say, we're committing to support this, myself and Michael here. Um, and I've never done this before on this program. Um, and as I said, there's a ton of great people doing great things and so many um, places where you can donate and support things with your hard-earned money. Um but I am putting out a challenge. If you're a Winnipeg sports fan and you have had a smile put on your face by Gabe over the course of these years and know how much he means to this community, um, if you are able um, of any denomination, help us out with this. It's Secure Gabe's Future on the GoFundMe um, put together and spearheaded by Ace and some great people for someone that that is Winnipeg, Manitoba, and our sports scene. And uh, as I say, we're gonna be we're gonna be here um, throughout it. Um, hopefully, we can blow this number away, and um, you know, no one's gonna need to worry at all about Gabe, and uh, he'll just continue living his best life, putting smiles on people's faces, and getting behind our teams uh, night in, night out. Um, Ace, thank you again for doing this. Uh, again, you know, obviously, Ace Burpee Show on Twitter. You'll be able to get some links on there. We're going to put it muted here on some, our... I just muted some button. <laughs> yes. Is that better? It's incredible technology. It's incredible. To... Oh, yeah, you, you, you sound great. But, like, um, I, I've never even hit this button before. It's on the far right on the bottom. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll hit that. Sounds okay, start good now. from the top. Yeah. Please welcome me. <laughs> next time, next time we'll pre-tape it. Um, fill people in, Ace. Before Wrong. you go, though, on just uh, where people can find it and anything else you want to let people know about uh, about the GoFundMe for Gabe that you and the gang have set up. Uh, just that. Uh, so we, she and I have a like good relationship in that she trusts me, which is one of the coolest things, right? for someone to trust you with something like this is enormous. I think Claudette feels a sense of relief that she can put this out there. And then also all these other people feel seen as in, this is a real thing that people struggle with. And now let's start talking about it. I think it's awesome. I do apologize, Remus, and because he Remus was so dialed and so ready. And s sorry to everyone as for if. the... I don't so know what good. that was. It does sound way better now, but, yeah. but this is awesome. Yeah, I don't know what that was. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, like that was probably like five minutes of the most annoying, <laughs> like even more annoying than my normal voice, which side note, yes, I know. <laughs> I, I'm well aware. 
people have been pointing it out for years. But anyway, uh, yeah. So I think we cracked 40 grand this morning, which is amazing. We got to get to that 100 G's. Uh, take care of Gabe. Make his sister Claudette feel a sense of uh, peace about moving forward. Because there's also like, you know what? Like, she's fine with me saying this. Is like she made a promise to Gabe's late mother, right? She's like, no, 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 mom. I'm telling you, I got it, right? So that is a few years ago. At the time, you're not thinking about, oh, wait, what happens when I get older? These things, like, they creep up on you and life hits you fast. And uh, and so, yeah, we can do this. We know we can. Um, we stay on top of it. All that goes to Gabe's future care. Um, he is, you know, you're talking about, like, he's synonymous with, like, Winnipeg sports and all these things. I was thinking about this, sort of ties in with, like, the departure, let's say, of Blake Wheeler or any other high-profile athlete is there's never been anyone more famous in Winnipeg that is this accessible. Think about it. No one's ever been so accessible. You can't find, like, the captain of the Jets at a Sea Bears game in Section 107. You know what I'm saying? No one's ever been, at the same time, the most famous and the most accessible. It's awesome and he's a legend and yeah you know those nights driving him home from a game and right like you get to know the family a bit and stuff like that i don't know i just think it's cool and thank you for this and if you missed it earlier again what you and remus are doing and continue to do there's just like i know so many people who this is literally their lifeline right they want to talk winnipeg sports they want to listen to someone talk about winnipeg sports there's people that like they don't have a network to talk to on a daily basis because they got work. Then they got to go straight from work to this thing, gymnastics, dance, all these things, right? They just want to hear this stuff. And it's y'all have crushed it. It's unreal. It really is cool. And Ace, I love listen, it. It's it. Thank you very much for that, for the kind words. And uh, as they say, it's great to have you on the program. As they say, you know what, we'll uh, reconnect in a couple weeks. I mean, if there's any other way we can help uh, out with this, do let us know. Um, you know, we'll promote it on our social channels and whatnot, because, um, as you said, I mean, he, uh, <clears throat> we love this city. We love this community. And, um, he has been, uh, uh, decades, decades of, um, a constant. And, uh, we want to make sure that that continues and that he continues to live his life and uh, doing a great thing. You, my man, when I think of great Canadians, I think of you at the top of the list. Congratulations on, on doing this. Thank you for doing this because um, you're the perfect guy to make this happen, and I know it's going to be successful, and it's important to me, and I think it's important to everyone that loves this city, this community, and loves our pal Dancing Gabe. Have an awesome Canada Day long weekend. We will talk to you very soon, and uh, appreciate your support as always, dude. Yeah, dude. The goal, Royal Kings, 750 Pemina, hats are there. They're yeah, just dial. Do yourself a favor. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Again, apologies. That's that's that happens. It's it, listen, it's, it's it's all good, dude. There if that's the worst thing that happens to us in 2023. We're living yeah. pretty good, man. No, no doubt about that. At Ace Burpee Show on Twitter, you can get links there and uh check in the description right here. Or if you're listening to the podcast, Go to at Sports Talk WPG. We'll have links there um, as well as uh, obviously where Ace is putting it out. Let's get this money for Dancing Gabe and uh, make sure he's dancing and smiling uh, as long as he can here in Winnipeg. Ace, have a good one, dude. We'll talk to you soon, man. Be well. Yeah, thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right, great stuff. And, uh, man, you know, it was really cool looking at the, um, at the, uh, the comments through all of this. Um, and obviously we appreciate Ace's nice words for what we're doing, but – um, I mean, it, listen, I, I, I almost get choked up talking about Gabe because I love him so much. Uh, I remember, you know, the, uh, the start of dancing Gabe and wondering who is this guy, you know, I'm obviously a lot younger at this time and he's never stopped and, and he won't stop. And, um, I was so happy when I saw Ace put this together because I, I, I know that, that the challenges that they have going forward and. You know, much like you'd think about, you know, a, a, a kid who if their parents are gone or, you know, someone that, you know, you don't want to get them left behind. You don't want someone to be in that sort of a situation. And um, as I say, if you are able to, uh, I'm challenging you all to uh, um, do what you can uh, to help us make this happen. And uh, thanks again to Ace, who is uh, who epitomizes 
everything great about our community once again doing all of this and uh, needless to say getting great great comments um from everybody here in and uh i love the comments about crappie r.i.p crappie he was great um and listen this is not crappie was synonymous with winnipeg jets but i mean this this isn't just a jet show i mean bombers gold eyes now with the sea bears um you know i'm a person that loves the university sports gabe's out there too i mean he is everywhere if there's a game on he's there he's dancing so uh i can't wait to see him back at the ballpark next week when the gold eyes are back fellas i took an took l yesterday but out of the basement now trending positively and now we're looking for a huge second half for the winnipeg gold eyes um I would have loved to have a Canada game and have them here on the weekend. We don't make the schedule, but we will be back. And actually, maybe over the course of the weekend, next week, here's a commitment from me to you. Uh, we've been talking about our Gold Eyes group night with Winnipeg Sports Talk. We'll lock in a date and let you know next week some details on how to get tickets, how to join us out there, and um, it should be great. In the meantime, if you want to set something up for you and your family, your friends, goldeyes.com. Uh, for the full schedule. Um, they're back toward the end of next week for a nice little homestand. So we'll uh, we'll get the gang out together. It's been a minute. We have already did the, the last sports trivia night was a couple months ago. So let's get the Winnipeg Sports Talk gang together uh, again. We'll do it at the Gold Eyes. And in the meantime, goldeyes.com for all the information on your favorite local nine. And uh, we'll have Gabe as a very special guest with the crew when we all get together for that. I'm, I'm sending, I'm sensing a great picture photo op for the WST people. Uh, again, goldice.com for all of that. Um, do a, let's do a quick look over at uh, some uh, a little golf right now for Breezy Bend Golf and Country Club. Can't wait. I'm going to get out to Breezy with the fellows on the weekend. I'm excited about that. Uh, they are at the Rocket Mortgage and Taylor Moore is uh, the leader at 13 under par. Oh, and our guy Ludwig Aberg, four under on his round, 11 under, two shots back. P. Greggy's hot right now. He was all over that today uh, in the lock shop this week. A couple of our exclusives looking pretty good as well. Top Canadian right now, Adam Hadwin. Hadwin, 10 under par. He's tied for fifth right now, along with our guy, Cool Bet's own Taylor Pendrith at 10 under par. I had Pendrith at plus 200 to be top Canadian. Maybe we can go 1-2 and we'll catch that bet as well. Um, Corin Morikawa is looking pretty good. Ricky Fowler's in the mix. Just need my guy Tony Fino to have a good round and uh, make the cut. Of course, whenever we're talking golf on Winnipeg Sports Talk, we're doing it for Breezy Bend Golf and Country Club. If you haven't already, uh, make sure to check out the uh, website of breezybend.ca or talk to Corey Johnson about getting on the waiting list for the 2020 for season um and of course our friends at little brown jug are ready for the long weekend if you haven't already get by your local beer store or head on down to the brewery and tap room and pick up supplies for the weekend and if you're sticking around saturdays what's golden starts at noon dj's great food from the shorties mobile kitchen unbelievable spot to spend an afternoon from uh, from noon until sunset every saturday at little brown jug and i know they'll have some uh, fun celebrations tomorrow for a very special day for the country as well down at little brown jug um all right remo why don't we do this let's get the ellis bit up um and we can play that because uh it was not long uh but i figured we can open up marbles if you haven't done it already oh i believe you have i got bullied um, into it i wasn't going to but everyone started typing it and it just okay well just that's like fine. domino effect that's fine. We're sort of running on cruise control anyways, yeah. considering the last 24 hours. So uh, th there's no point resisting. Marbles is open, exclamation mark marbles in the chat. Um, but why don't we quickly uh, play uh, our uh, little conversation with Stephen Ellis, wrapping the draft from Nashville, and then we can get up and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a few fun stories from the, uh, from the program, from the week in nashville while we get ready for the marbles and uh, we can figure out who else we need a marble while we play stephen ellis so stephen of course if you saw the shows last week spent quite a bit of time with stephen from daily face off um talking about all the young prospects we talked to him about colby barlow and some of the other interesting picks from the first round uh, we got a chance to catch up with him just before we busted out of music city tomorrow here's daily face off stephen ellis on uh, round one of the N N nhl draft 
Well, Stephen Ellis from Daily Faceoff here. Uh, quite the first round, a little slow for trades, but uh, well, there were no trades. Ton of talent, though. What did you think overall about uh, and started off with the Carlson going at number two? Yeah, you know, we heard Carlson kind of as the rumors throughout the week that he could potentially go number two. I, I Fantilli to me is still the, the better prospect, but I think just the way it, it's going to work out for Anaheim, they like Carlson. We knew they like Carlson, uh, and that's a guy who could step in the lineup very quickly. But otherwise, you know, an interesting first round. Uh, not exactly at the start of Connor Bedard, but throughout the rest of the day, it was just, you know, I, I can't say there were a ton of huge stretches. The Ducks got their guy. I just feel bad about that guy that I took a picture of outside with the Anaheim 23 Fantilli jersey. Well, that was his mistake. Never do that. <laughs> no doubt. Um, first off, Jet fans are pretty fired up. Uh, Colby Barlow made a great impression interview-wise. You watched a lot of his game. Uh, what sort of a player are the Winnipeg Jets getting in Colby Barlow? He's a guy that I think at the beginning of the year, a lot of people could have thought of maybe being a top 10 pick. And, uh, you know, he fell a little bit, not really because of his own fault, just because the draft class was really strong. You know, almost hit 50 goals this year. I could see him hitting 60 next year in the OHL. Uh, just kind of see what his line mates are going to be like. But he did a lot of caring for that team. The captain, a guy that also at the U18s showed a lot more of a two-way play that we didn't necessarily always see this year in the OHL. So he continues to show he's more than just a goal scorer, but that's what you're looking for there. That's a guy who knows how to put pucks in the net. Uh, you know, a huge character player. Uh, you know, CHL, uh, you know, scholastic player of the year, which is funny. That's the fifth time the Winnipeg Jets have drafted uh, the brainiac of the draft. You can't go wrong with that. You know, this is a guy that's very, everyone says he's one of the nicest kids you'll talk to, and he is. He's a great guy, uh, some really insightful answers when you talk to him, and, you know, just, I, I've been able to watch him since his, like, U16, U15 days, and just the way he's been able to grow. Back then, he still looked like he was, like, 33 years old. He's been able to shave a beard since he was in, like, kindergarten, and, and that's a, kind of the funny thing. It's, I saw a stat that he was, he was in kindergarten when the Jets became the Jets from Atlanta. So just to think, to make us all feel old at that point, but uh, just the way that he just kind of presents himself both on and on, off the ice, he's going to be a fan favorite. Uh, uh he can snipe. Uh, we were just looking at some of the highlights. I mean, man, can he shoot. And he manages to find a way to get the puck, uh, to shoot the puck in, in traffic as well. I guess that was a big reason why he uh, was uh, sniffing around 50. Yeah, he's you know he, he's got such a quick release. Um, the, I was talking to him, kind of just, you know, he doesn't do anything fancy with a stick other than, you know, he, he's just, he's quick with it. He's not wasting his movements. Uh, he could play the power play. He likes that extra s the space. Uh, in, in terms of pure goal scorers, there are very few in this draft that were as good as him. Uh, Steve and Elsa Daily Faceoff with us. Um, we spent a lot of time talking about the uh, draft, the first round prospects. Uh, who uh, was there a team or two that you thought really hit homers with their picks, considering where they were picking? One for sure is uh, Vegas with the last pick in their first round. And David Edstrom to me is a guy that could have gone top 15. Uh, someone who's got yeah, six foot three, he's got good size, really good shot, played key minutes in Sweden at the U18s. Where to me, that's where it really stood out as yeah, this guy's got it's going on. Uh, I, I, it does it seem like it's cheating to say Chicago, but I really liked Oliver Moore. I think that there's no way Oliver Moore should have fallen to, to the second pick. And I think the Colorado going out there and getting uh, uh, Cal Ritchie, that's going to be, I think, one of the biggest deals of this draft, just the way he he's just such a two-way threat. On the other side of things, uh, was there any gasps on DFO row at any of the picks? Toronto. I'm not exactly sure where Easton Cowan decided. Like, I don't know why they thought that was the right pick there, but, uh, you know, a guy that had a really good end of the season, great, uh, but, uh, like, I had him at number 78, and I know I probably had him higher than most others. Like, that's just kind of everyone was shocked. Uh, what about the Russians? I, a lot of people talking about Arizona going uh, with two Russians at 6 and 12, neither of them Mitchkov. Yeah, a bit, a bit risky, I think, but those are two teammates that, you know, are good friends, and that might be easier to be able to convince them to both come over, and uh, I don't think that'll be too big of an issue. Everyone wants to play in the NHL, and those are two guys that uh, are now among the best at their, their kind of position. Simashev's one of the best shutdown defensemen, a hard-hitting guy, and then Daniel Boots, 6'5", that's a forward, and can skate. Like, that, that's tantalizing. That's exciting. What do you think about uh, Philly getting Mishkoff at seven. Uh, you usually don't get superstars that low. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, man, it's been great seeing you. Uh, thanks so much for doing this and enjoy the uh, rest of the draft today. You too. All right, good stuff from uh, from Steven Ellis finishing up uh, WST in Nashville, the NHL draft presented by Cool Bet. Uh, we're going to get to Cool Bet lines in just a second, but uh, last call for marbles everybody uh, exclamation mark marbles in the chat if you haven't already um speaking of cool bet uh we will get to that in just a second uh, oh by the way fishing this weekend heading out there 
good luck to everyone when you're putting your lines in the water. If you are thinking about a world-class fishing experience, unlike any other where uh, you can be on the water after a short flight in less than two hours from the city of Winnipeg, Aikens Lake is the spot. I'm going to head out there in about a month. We'll have some great footage for you on the social channels here. But in the meantime, uh, go to AikensLake.com for more information. I do believe they've got a couple of availabilities left this year, uh, but already booking into 2024. So get on that, folks, and get into the Aikens experience. There really is nothing, nothing like it. Um, all right, cool bet lines. And again, P. Greggy, my guys, thanks so much for the support to uh, make the, the trip happen. A great response from everyone. We've got NHL free agency odds right now. Um, here are some things that are up right now. How many years will Austin Matthews' next contract be? We don't care about that one too much. Uh, Dmitry Orlov, Tarasenko, Ryan O'Reilly. But how about this? Here are the Blake Wheeler Odds for free agency. I think this is something people will have fun with. The New York Islanders are the favorite at plus 400. The Florida Panthers are five plus 500. So that's five to one. Bet 10 bucks, win 50, would pay you back 60. Just to, to put it in perspective, if you're not familiar with these. Um, so Wheeler, five to one for the Panthers. Five to one for the Rangers. Plus 550 for the Hurricanes, Penguins 6 to 1, Buffalo 7 to 1, Boston plus 750, Wings 8 to 1, Predators 8 to 1, Blackhawks 8 to 1, and the Minnesota Wild, his hometown team, 12 to 1. I, I think I'm going to have to sprinkle on Florida. And maybe Minnesota, 12 to 1, Remo. I'm actually sort of surprised that Minnesota's at the bottom of that list. I mean, he's going to be able to come in on a cheap contract. They've got those issues. So uh, all that's there. Hot dog eating contest odds are there for Joey Chestnut, as I mentioned. And let's see if we've got the, uh, we've got our lock shop one in yet. We are going to be putting up a lock shop exclusive. So uh, check out that as well. I think we're going to go with uh, Elks plus two, plus three and a half. Bombers minus five and a half, BC minus two and a half. Um, so we'll put that up and you can check that out as well over at Coolbet. All right. Um, now listen, as Remo wraps up the marbles, we're going to, uh, a, a couple couple shout outs I need to give out. First of all, WST regular Julian Labossier getting married. So uh, on behalf of both of us, as well as everyone in the chat. Congratulations, Julian, and uh, hopefully all will go well. Um, great to hear you uh, having uh, having your big day. So uh, congratulations on that. And the other big congrats from us is to Rick Delane and the Winnipeg Sports Talk car. Another dub for Rick. I believe he's at the top of the standings right now, repping Winnipeg Sports Talk wherever races are had. So, uh, so happy and proud to be associated with a championship ride like Rick Delane and Delane Racing. So credit to Rick for uh, for making that happen as well. Um, all right, Reem, well, I can't believe we've actually made it. Uh, much like driving home last night, uh, I've sort of been on cruise control through the show, but it's been a good one. Everyone's getting uh, congratulations to Julian in there. And uh, I think it's about time to uh, to do a little marble race to it to the end. Do we have a special guest with us today? Yes, I do have a special guest here. I think first appearance in a long time. Uh, my son Evan is with me. He missed me a lot while we were gone, so he's sitting on my lap. There's Big right Ev. Now. Evan, Ev, can you hear us all? What's going on? Um. Are you ready for the? We're looking for my hockey card. <laughs> <laughs> but it was one in one of those bags. <laughs> yeah, we can open them after. We can open them after. No doubt. we got a big marble race coming up. Evan, you're getting a marble. We're going to give you a marble now that Daddy's back. Um, other marbles today being added. Uh, of course, Blake Wheeler. Thanks for the memories, Blake. Good luck in the future. You get a marble today. Um, we're definitely giving a marble to Colby Barlow, the Jets' first pick. We're also going to give one to Zach Neuring, who uh, joined us. The two uh, can't give every pick, but we interviewed both of those guys. Very impressive young men. Uh, we're going to give one to Ace for jumping on the show today. We're going to give one to Dancing Gabe. Make sure to support that GoFundMe. 
Uh, and we're going to give one to Zach Benson. Had a great chat with Zach. He was so excited to be going to the Buffalo Sabres along with Matt Savoy and his former captain, Peyton Krebs. And Remo, I think it's only right that we give a marble to Pat Brisson, PLD's agent. Because I don't think anyone benefited from the Dubois drama more than us on Winnipeg Sports Talk, <laughs> starting off with Pat's comments last summer. And then I also do appreciate Pat opening it up to teams other than just the Montreal Canadiens. I think it worked out much better for the Winnipeg Jets considering what could have happened. He's one of the top agents. We want to keep a good relationship here on Winnipeg Sports Talk with the top agents like Pat Brisson. So Pat is getting it. And, uh, and maybe we should also give one to the WST laptop considering it met its untimely demise in very controversial circumstances yesterday in Nashville. Yes, I definitely need to add in the WST, uh, WST laptop. Pat on I should write him a letter and an email just thanking him because we did hit record number of live views, 1,000, over 1,100 the other day. Um, and I do, so we do have a bit of show and tell here. There is a picture before we go we have to add. Um, someone said, who is, you know, we're talking about some of your interactions in... Nashville, and here, check out this picture, Hus. <laughs> yes, a candid shot Remus got in my conversations with Barry Trotz. He popped by, um, this is after the first round, and I had just um, you know, congratulated him on the new job um, and, uh, and had mentioned that we were the ones, along with our friends at Little Brown Jug, that had the... Uh, the offer of free beer for life. And he laughed and ended up sticking around and having a little bit of a chat about all of that. Um, obviously in great fun, big, big weekend for the Nashville Predators and Barry Trotz, who has certainly put his stamp on that team so far. And uh, he made a point of saying how much he appreciated um, all the interest from everyone here in Winnipeg and how that made him feel. Obviously, you know, he was looking at moving on from coaching and he's got into a great spot, but uh that was definitely a highlight conversation with uh, with Barry Trotz, and uh, some laughs were had when he found out that we were the ones behind that uh, that offer that um, went somewhat viral as he entered into the uh, into the coaching market as a free agent after uh, he was no longer uh, no longer the coach in uh, in New York. Yeah, the draft was ending, and he was talking to someone. So I I was like, Hus, we have to. <laughs> We have to <laughs> say something to him, and uh, he's super friendly, super nice. So uh, that was huge. That was huge last year, uh, Trot's Watch, all summer, even though it didn't end uh, the way that we wanted it to. No, no doubt about it. Um, and again, he, uh, he he just wanted to, he said he really appreciated it. It meant a lot, the uh, support. And it was a very difficult decision for him not to jump on all the beer. Oh, no, the job, but also the beer was nice, too. And I told him that when he's back here, We've always got a few little brown jugs for him um, uh, when he's back here. And, uh, and obviously did talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the horrible um, uh, tragedy in his hometown of Dauphin as well. But uh, mostly it was all about good things and, uh, you know, a few laughs. And, of course, uh, he's a busy guy right now. Bought out Matt Duchesne, got rid of Ryan Johansson. That team's going to look very, very different going forward. It's a really wild changing of the guard. I mean, you think back to 2017-18, the top, top two teams, teams in the league. league. Battle, battle in the, the second, second round, round the National Predators, Predators and, the and the Winnipeg, Winnipeg Jets. Jets. And, and uh, Duchesne and Johansson gone. gone. Wheeler, Wheeler gone. We expect Shifley to be on the move at some, some point as well. well. Um, a, lot a lot of things can change, change but it's really, really sort of come, come to a head right now from two teams, teams that have had a pretty, pretty good run of success over, uh, over, over the last little while. while. But, but that, that really was the height, certainly for the Winnipeg Jets, and just removed from the Preds going all the way to the Stanley Cup file final. All right, Rima. Now, do we have a... Uh, we've got a special theme song, I understand, for today's Marble Race. Yeah, we got a special theme song. Hold on. Let me get it ready. I'm a bit, bit occupied <laughs> <laughs> over here, but I'm right trying now. to get it. I'm trying to get it all set up. Uh, give it, Can you take it for one sec? Yeah, 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 yeah no, no problem. problem. Um, as I said, we'll, we'll, get, the, we'll, we'll get, get that up, up and, and then... then and then what we're going to do is uh, finish up. Oh, by the way, second. speaking of bombers, um, of course, the game is tomorrow. 
as soon as this marble race is finished, uh, we're going to fire people over to Bonfire Sports. And as I mentioned, we haven't done enough Bomber stuff this week, just with being on the road and everything happening around this uh, week for the Jets. Uh, but I'll certainly be locked into that game tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we'll be uh, talking about a 3 and one team coming back home for next week. Um, but for all of your Bomber fix, Bombing, Walby are getting going right now. So uh, as soon as we're finished Marble Race, we'll head you over there. So you can just basically stay in the chat and we'll do one of our, uh, one of our patented Winnipeg Sports Talk raids. Um, I guess just while Remus gets, uh, gets this yeah, ready, I, I know I joked it. I got it here. Uh, Bombers right now. Five and a half point favorites on the road against the Montreal Alouettes. BC is up to three point favorites for the uh, Monday game against the Toronto Argonauts. That'll be a hell of a game. Two undefeated teams. Sounds like the Argos are getting a few more fans coming out too. We'll look to see how that goes. And then Elks and Red Blacks tonight. Uh, Ottawa, two point favorites at home against uh, Edmonton. And one thing, I'm not sure about this game. I guess the air quality is just terrible in Montreal from these forest fires. They've got some warnings out right now. I imagine the game will still happen, but uh, obviously we'll keep an eye out uh, on all of that. Um, listen, are we ready for the special marbles theme before we the are, race stream? We are. All right, perfect. Hey, a uh, little tip of the cap to Tristan Rivers' music. He never ceases to amaze us. I haven't heard this yet, but I understand. Celebrating our week in Nashville at the draft, we've got a special marbles theme. So uh, let's hear it before we uh, get to it. It's Friday, another week of work's gone by, you deserve to treat yourself, maybe a nice cream truck or a bottle of beer, on the whole day in, so lax you can't deny, why use that for <laughs> oh awesome a little twanging marble race theme shout out to tristan and candace for uh another banger here on winnipeg sports talk for the marble race all right um so we've added the marbles today reem um we've got the twang factor is off the charts. People love it. Uh, Morgan Wallen, maybe. Um, how about uh, Luke Bryan, Kenny Chesney? We're not sure, but uh, yeah, little country I, version. I haven't come back of the Marble Race uh, of the Marble Race song tonight. Um, all right, Remo, have we decided on where we're uh, where we're going today for this one? I'm going with the Temple of Steve. Okay, Temple of Steve. That is a good one. Oh, look at this. We're all ready to go too. This is uh, this is great. Oh, all right, this is great. everyone. Evan, are you ready for a marble race? Here Evan, you go. ready? Yeah. Special guest star, Evan Remus, along with Dad, who's back at home. We're back at home. It's been an incredible week. Thanks to all of you. Shout out to all the new subscribers and viewers as well. Um, if you've just found us this week and you're somewhere here going, what the hell's going on? This is how we finish off the week on Winnipeg Sports Talk with the marble race. We do have a hoodie for... The winner, shout out to our friends at Shipman Associates for uh, providing those for us. And uh, if you win, send us an email, winnipegsportstalk at gmail.com. We'll get you set up at some point next week. We're in the Temple of Steve. We've got over 200 marbles. We've got special guest Evan here. It's a long weekend. Let's do it. Marbles time on WST before Canada Day and free agency tomorrow. Yeah, Evan did get a marble. Evan's got a marble. Pat Brisson, Wheeler, Zach Benson, Zach Nuring, Colby Barlow, Ace, and Dancing Gabe. Oh, my pal Ross Ransby's up in first. Nice start for Ross up against Shorn. Shorn's, I think, been on a bit of a roll lately with uh, their uh, their weekly bet on the marble race. 
So we'll see how things go. Temple of Steve. Ooh, the North End Ninja with a real nice start. He's through. And Chris Nelson looking good. Mo Trucka, Ed Ward in the mix right now. But yeah, the North End Ninja and Chris Nielsen with a little bit of a lead before another group, including Moose 3, Ed Ward, and Mo Trucka. Chris Nielsen looking good. Moose on the right. Schickster. Schickster looking pretty good right now. Oh, yeah. Temple of Steve is always a good one. Let's see who goes right and left. Schickster has taken the left. Seapot's there. Moose on the right. Oh, man, Schickster had a heck of a, just completely negotiated that um, marble, um, that obstruction, if you will, quite well. As you can tell, it's been a long week. When I don't have my game for marble race, you can tell we've, uh, we're running on fumes here. Wow, Schickster has really opened up a bit of a lead here. We haven't seen this before, although he does have, oh, Schickster gets through again. You know what? That that could be, oh, he's got some, he's got the North End Ninja is coming. Moose 3 is coming. Oh, Tristan Rivers Music just got popped over the top rope. How did that happen? Schickster, North End Ninja, Moose 3, Brad Woods, and Howard St. James. Everyone's in it. Schickster's going one way. North End Ninja's going the other. Oh, and of course, the Temple of Steve. No one's in until they're in. Colin Fast looking good right now. Who will it be? The North End Ninja. No! North End Ninja missed. Brad Woods. Schickster got it in. Brad Woods. North End Ninja missed by a millimeter. Oh, yeah. The Temple of Steve. There's nothing more exciting than the finish of the marble race on the Temple of Steve. There's no doubt about that. Well, shout out to Schickster. I know schickster has been with us through all these shows. I'm not sure if Schickster's ever won before. Um, but he's certainly been a regular, so very well done. Thoughts and prayers to North End Ninja. We really did think that it was yours. And now it's just to, you know, we'll see whether you end up getting in or not. I wonder if Ross got in. Ross had, wouldn't that be something if Ross had a huge run, missed the bin, and then Shorn ends up winning their bet, even if he was way behind it. Your boy Mitch, final one in there. Bullish Bradley over the top rope. All right, let's see these final results. Schickster with the win. Brad Wood, Seapot, Zach Thee. Daryl Selly, Kenny's water bottle. Nicely done, KWB. Matt McMahon, eighth place, retro Winnipeg. Love that. Lori Loving Life, Joe from Winnipeg, our top 10 today. Uh, oh, Ross did actually finish very well. Nice work, Ross, 15. You get the dub over Shorn today. Peg said, you do Ace Burpee, pretty good. 25th, nicely done. What else do we have here? Winnipeg Walters in the top one. Mary Jane. Mike Wynn, have a great weekend, Mike. I see there's iHeart Gaming. I'm trying to look to see. There's Rum Hut. I'm going to look forward to getting to the Rum Hut next week. Kivens, Seegers, Sean Lichka. Wow, only 80 finished in the Temple of Steve. Everybody else got thrown over the top rope. Um, Schickster, fire us an email, winnipegsportstalk at gmail.com. We can uh, arrange, preferably if you can come by after the show someday next week. That would be great. And um, we'll go from there. Um, Reem, just before we go, um, are we, are we going to have the uh, the chat, um, or sorry, the, uh, the link for the GoFundMe I'm in back. the description of the YouTube? Yeah, so the description of the YouTube I've updated has the link for the GoFundMe. And a couple okay, programming great. notes. We're going to send you to Bonfire right after this for Darren. Yep. And then Kenny and Rennie, uh, that's Sean Reynolds of Sportsnet and Ken Weeb of Sportsnet. Together, they're Kenny and Rennie. They're, <laughs> they're live at 4 o'clock. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Is Sean back or is he still there? I think he's in transit, Sean. I think he's in transit. Oh, wow. There's plenty. Of the, the possibilities are endless for a K&R on the road with Sean doing it from an airport or something. Um, well, we'll see that. So anyways, we're going to send you to Bonfire. Get your bomber fixed. We're all over the bombers next week. And again, it was a big, big week for us really focusing on the Jets. Um, Evan, yeah, give a wave. Thanks for, uh, thanks for a special guest star appearance today on the show, Ev. 
says thank you. Thank <laughs> And lots of people are saying hi to you in the chat as well, Evan. Saying hi. Uh, um, so yeah, b b You're bonfire there. coming up. And then Kenny and Rennie at four. So check that out. Um, and otherwise, folks, have a great weekend. Uh, I'm sure, you know, if there's a lot going on free agency-wise, we'll probably pop up, fire up a video. We won't do like a live show unless something earth-shattering happens. We definitely need a bit of a break. But uh, we'll be back on Tuesday, talk about the biggest story in the world of sports. Joey Chestnut going for his 16th straight mustard belt. Um, I joke, of course. And hey, yeah, as Doug Phil said, uh, if you want to get in on the WST Discord, there'll be some free agency talk. There'll be Bombers game chat for Canada Day. So you can always head there and chat with friends. The Discord link is in the description as well. And hey, shout out to the podcast listeners. But if you don't want to get that link, go to our socials or go to the YouTube channel and click on that. Let's everyone do what we can to uh, to support Gabe and this great GoFundMe that uh, Ace Burpee started. Um, but folks, do really want to thank everyone. First of all, thanking Cool Bet, Pat and the gang for making that trip to Nashville a possibility. It was a huge week for us. I think the biggest we've ever had. Um, and, uh, and and it was the start of many more to come. Um, uh, but a watershed moment, if you will, for WST to be there. And uh, obviously the results were... Um, Everything that we could have hoped for and more. It was a really, really great week, and the response we got from everyone uh, meant a lot and uh, should bode well for future trips and content like that in the future. In the meantime, have a happy Canada Day. Have a great long weekend. Enjoy a couple little brown jugs for me, and uh, we'll be back on Tuesday, uh, if not before, with uh, free agency talk, bombers in Montreal, and much, much more as we get into July on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Thanks for being with us all week from Nashville. It's great to be home. Now it's time to, uh, well, it's either going to be one of two things, either get some more rest or maybe get out and get into a couple of those little brown jugs because the long weekend is here. Have a good one. From Michael Remus, I'm Andrew Patterson. This has been Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Heading over to Bonfire to check in with Darren Bombing and Chris Walby right now. Oh, my God. Oh! Shut it down! Oh, Let's go home! Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily.